What's good, everybody, and a welcome to your very first 2019 episode of the What's Good Games podcast. I'm Andrea Renee, joined by Miss Brittany Brombacher. Hello. And Miss Christine Steimer. Oh, hello. Happy New Year, ladies. Happy hello. New Year. My feet are still so fucked up right now. Wait, why? Wow. What happened? All the dancing. Oh, heels? I, wore, I wore heels, ladies. I wore Oh, my heels. goodness. How tall were those heels? Oh, they weren't that tall. They're maybe like, yay, tall. three, three inches. Three yeah, inches. I don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, I left my actual shoes that I was gonna wear at Andrea's hotel room, and I don't think I ever got them back. I they think I are to get in them. the spare bedroom at my house. I I, I put them there, hoping you would see them, but maybe the last time Nay. you were here, they just got overlooked. But I'll be sure to set them out for the next oh, time you good. come into town. I got to buy some new shoes, but they were playing some really great 90s hits up at the Space Needles where we celebrated, and I lost my mind a little bit. Wait, yeah. okay, the top of the Space, granted, it has been probably 20 years, which makes me cringe inside, <laughs> since I've been <laughs> to the Space Needle, the top of the Space Needle, but the last time I was there, I, um, it, it spun, like, there yeah. was... So like, how do you not get sick? Because it spins really slowly, like really. Yeah, I remember. Really slowly. I remember like being thrown off. Maybe it was just I needed to get used to it. But I re definitely remember stepping off and being like, "Whoa!" Well, they. I'm sure it's it's been so, like, redone over the that? years. Yeah, no. So you can't tell. Like you can't unless you're looking out. You can slowly see your scenery changing. So they okay. recently renovated it, and the ground, the bottom floor is glass, so you can see down. <gasps> no, that's terrifying. That's, that's fucking amazing. terrifying. Lena, I oh, need, I so need to go cool. back. That yeah, sounds so it was cool. awesome. Oh my god, I would be like clinging to one of you, like, oh god, we're gonna die. <laughs> How far in advance did you have to make those reservations? I have to imagine we that actually must have been one of the hottest tickets. You would think, but we got them in early December, no problem. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I don't know. That's we crazy. Yeah, so maybe Space Needle would be us? such a great place to watch the fireworks. All of us, yeah. New Year's, next year, Space Needle, let's go. I'm so it was really I'm cool. fucking terrified. I'll need to take lots of shots before I you go. You can, no, you absolutely can. <laughs> Absolutely. It was we are really here cool. to facilitate you taking shots all the time, Steimer. You <laughs> know that. <laughs> okay. Well, we hope that you all listening out there had a lovely New Year's Eve and a lovely Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever holiday you celebrate. Or maybe you don't celebrate holidays at all. Maybe you were just making some paper, working long hours, and we appreciate all of you letter carriers, all of you UPS and FedEx drivers who really truly are the heroes of the holiday season. <laughs> Because I had so many things delivered this year because yep. I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to jump on this like super online shopping bandwagon. I do love a good trip to the mall, but um, really utilized a lot of delivery services this year. So if you are one of those out there, you get an extra special thanks from us. But we have some cool things to talk about this show. We've got some interesting info coming for you very soon about what's happening with our Patreon. If you guys noticed that we put up a Patreon exclusive vlog this week, it was me making my New Year's Eve hangover cure, my Bloody Mary <laughs> recipe. In that video, I mentioned that we were we are going to be doing weekly vlogs for you guys, which I'm really excited about. It's one of our revamps for our Patreon for 2019. So if you guys have been gone for a while or if you used to be a patron and you stepped your pledge down or maybe you have never thought about pledging before, maybe take a second, take a second look. Think about if you would like to support us in that way because we would really appreciate it and you're going to get more content from us in 2019. And as I have said time and time again, we will have more details on that very soon. Uh, some other things that you may have missed over the break. Steimer did her Dream Daddy stream. and I did. I watched some of it and man oh man, Bruce Wayne is so dang cute. He's mm -hmm. the best dad. You are good at the voice acting, Steimer. I oh, was very you. impressed. I yeah. was just... I was losing it toward the end there. I was like, oh, God, <laughs> what voices am I doing? I definitely, there was one guy I was trying to play British, but would slip into Holy. Australian sometimes. And I was like, oh, no, this is bad. Um, but it was really fun. And so thank you to anybody who stopped by and watched. Yeah. Did you find love? I did. Yeah, <gasps> I did. Oh, are you kidding? I'm so good at dating <laughs> sims. 
<laughs> so good. Because, like, the trick is, even if it's not the person you want, you figure out who likes you and you commit. You're just like, you, I'm, we're, we're doing this thing, and it always works. <laughs> That's good advice for dating sims, yes. Not real life, but not dating real life. sims, yes. Real life, you should, <laughs> you know, want the person to, and then if they like you, good. And if not, then there's always ice cream. <laughs> That's that's some really sage advice, actually. Ice cream never <laughs> fails you; it always no, is good to you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I was not I was not expecting that. <laughs> really, kind of caught me off guard there. Um, well, if you guys missed Steimer's stream and you want to see who she found love with, you can of course find that archive over at our Twitch channel at twitchtv slash What's Good Games or at youtubecom slash What's Good Games as well. So if you want to. Uh, listen to all of Steimer's voices and see everything that went down with Dream Daddy and Bat Dad. Speaking oh, of oh, Patreon, yes. real quick, <clears throat> I have some breaking news that I found my fanfic that I wrote when I was a yes, teenager. Yes, best news ever! Yes. <laughs> yep, so during our Patreon anniversary stream, we said, hey, if we, you help us get to this certain level, I'm going to do a read for you, and it was on my old computer, and I've had it at this little store, and they said, sorry, it's basically dead. But I remembered that I uploaded it to fanfiction.net back in the day. And I found it, and holy shit. Where is the internet? Oh, my God. It is so bad and awful and cringeworthy. <laughs> I'm going to have to take so many shots before I ever do a reading. So I'm going to be uploading these. But, like, I want to do this so badly with you. Like, I want to do the action figures. I want to get drunk. <laughs> I want to do voices. Like, let us help you. I feel okay. like this should be a group effort, Britt. Yes. Oh, my God. I don't know. We'll see about that. Anyway. Don't you want my British-Australian accent? Dude, I don't even want to do this because there's that bad. I'll have to get really drunk, but it's going to be amazing. Well, I have action figures. We know that you don't want to do it. It's not about that. It's about the fact no. that you committed to doing it. And oh, so absolutely. I'm do doing it. this. <laughs> I'm going above and beyond. I have all the action figures. I'm going to give them all voices. I'm going to do a little series. It's about me moving into uh, a dorm room with Zidane Tribal and the Final Fantasy IX crew. And I didn't even know what a dorm room was back in the day. I was 10, 11, 13 years old. I don't know how old I was. You had an I, idea of what a dorm room was. I think it was, I thought it was just a big house that everyone lived in, which is not incorrect. I mean, but anyway, yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> I guess oh, if boy. you're going really literal, that's that's true. There you go. So yeah, keep your eyes out peeled for that bad boy. That's going to be a thing. Amazing. Amazing. The gears are spinning inside my mind of all the things that we can do. I'm, I'm definitely excited about that. Um, all right. Well, uh, before we get into the news or the non-news, because there's really not any news happening right now, um, I want to give a big thank you to our sponsor for this week's episode, Bespoke Post. Uh, when you're constantly on the go, grinding away at the office or hanging out with friends, there's not much time to think about upgrading your style or your home. That's why we at What's Good Games love getting a box of awesome from Bespoke Post. These guys are out scouting for quality and unique products to send in each box. And now you can experience it too at boxofawesome.com. My box of awesome was super handy over the holidays because that wine key that came with my um, wine box. I can't, I think it was called Psalm or something. It was a play on words for like sommelier. I'll have to look up exactly what it was. Um, but I loved this wine key so much because it's so handy at opening bottles of wine quickly that I actually gifted one to my in-laws. And now they love it too. Because every time I would go to my in-laws house, I would of course be the one that would be like, Andrea, pick out the wine. And I'd be like, okay, twist my arm. <laughs> Um, and then I would go to open the wine and they would have this like antiquated old thing or they had the, one of those weird rabbit things with all the silver handles. And I was like, I don't oh, know with the this... arms. Yeah. I was like, I don't know how this thing works. I love the arm ones. They're so funny. Yeah, they're little people. <laughs> I, was, I was like, how about we, I just go back to the basics. And that was why I was so glad that my box of awesome contained this really solid quality wine key. And you guys can get started with your very own Box of Awesome at boxofawesome.com, where you're going to answer a few short questions that will help them get a feel for the boxes that go best with your lifestyle. Like if you want to learn about or get boxes about travel, about kitchen and cooking, if you want stuff like me that's about, um, you know, beer and wine or, or spirits. So you'll answer a few questions so they can help tailor the kind of boxes you want. It's super easy. So whether you're in search of, like I said, whether you're in search of the perfect drink, a walk-up pad, or jet-setting in style, Bespoke Post improves your life 
one box at a time. Each box goes for under 50 bucks, but has more than $70 worth of unique gear waiting inside for you. And at the first of each month, you're going to get an email with what's going to be coming in the box. And then you're going to have five days to change colors or sizes or add extra goods to it. So if you're not feeling what they've picked out for you that month, then you can just skip it. It's that simple. From barrel aging kits to limited edition cigars, weekender bags to classy dop kits. By the way, I had to look up what a dop kit was. Did not know. I was about to ask. It's, it? a, it's just a name for a toiletry bag. Oh. Yeah. Huh. I was like, what's a dop well, kit? I literally Googled so what is a dop kit. <laughs> <laughs> this book post offers essential goods and guidance for the modern person so if you guys want to get 20 percent off your first subscription box go to boxofawesome.com and enter code what's good at checkout that's box of awesome just like it sounds dot com code what's good for 20 percent off your first box of bespoke post theme boxes for those that give a damn all right so as i mentioned there's not much news because it's the beginning of January and a lot of offices were closed and have been closed for the last couple of weeks. So we decided to talk about our 2019 New Year's resolutions, recap what we went over for our 2018 resolutions and see how we did. And I also wanted to quickly mention, if you missed my Twitter post, I picked my top 20 games, as did Brittany and Steimer. Did you pick a number? Or... I picked five like a normal human being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Simon, you were giving me a tough time about picking twenty games. I was just like, that? twenty is so many. Like, why? Like, what? Why? Okay, so why? I, I, not everyone needs to be acknowledged. I know that there were so many great games this year, but that doesn't mean everyone needs a slot on the podium. I'm going for more no, of like no. sports winners here. Like, there's okay, never so this I many. don't. I don't think it's about everyone getting a medal, everyone getting a ribbon. I think it's about just choosing the personal favorites we played throughout for me it's fun to be like, okay did i like this game more than that game and it's fun to kind of like rank them i'm not saying they're all getting a medal i mean anything after three you're getting cold even though you're great <laughs> it's true but i mean it's just one of, yeah i think that's what it's more about not everyone gets a medal i think it's just it's too it's too much for me which is why i picked way less but you two go on with your bad selves yeah i mean and this was not meant to be like a really um deep dive debate i just had seen a lot of other people on twitter picking their top 20 games and so I was like, oh, this would be a fun exercise for me um, to pick 20. And what it really forced me to do was look at all of the games that I had played this year and go, what were the games that left an impact on me? And what were the ones that didn't, you know? And there was some games that I really wanted to include on the list, but didn't quite make the cut. But I think what my list did show to me was that this was an incredible year for video games. And there were a lot of games that weren't even on my list because I didn't get a chance to play them. And I think that that is incredible news for everybody that loves video games and for everyone that makes video games because it means more people are playing, more people are buying, and more people are having a good time. So let's talk about that. I'm going to run down mine really quickly. And then Brittany, you can do yours. And then Starmer will get to your top five. How's that sound? Sounds great. I did insert a couple small pieces of news that I found about some of the games uh, that are in my list. So I'll, t I'll go over those as we go through the list. So my number one was, of course, what we picked as our game of the year in last week's episode, God of War. Number two was Destiny 2 Forsaken. Number three was Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Four was Celeste. Five was Monster Hunter World. Six was Red Dead Redemption 2. Seven was Legend of Soul Guard. Eight was Spider-Man. Nine, Tetris Effect. Ten, Florence. Eleven, Moss. Twelve, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Thirteen, Detroit Become Human. Fourteen, Astrobot Rescue Mission. Fifteen, Far Cry 5. Sixteen, Gris. Seventeen, Diablo 3 Eternal Collection on Switch. Eighteen, Mario Tennis Aces. Nineteen, Overcooked 2. Twenty, Super Mario Party. So that was my list. Um... Obviously, the top three are the games that I talked probably the most about this year, even though I did talk a lot about Celeste. I was looking back and forth between Assassin's Creed and Celeste and going, hmm, would Celeste edge it out? And I was like, no, I'm too much of a diehard Assassin's Creed fan. Now, I did kind of go back and forth with Destiny in Assassin's Creed. Like, should I put Assassin's Creed above Destiny? But I yes. have spent more time with Destiny 2 <laughs> this year than any other game. And so th what that means for me is that, like, this game – was one of my favorite games of 2018. And that's what this list was about. It wasn't about critically, like, does this game mm -mm. deserve to be the number two ranked game of the year overall? No, of course not. There are plenty of other games that I would rank above Destiny 2 as far as, like, 
if I was going to stack like the best definitive games of the year. But this is my personal favorite of the games that I loved spending time with, um, which is why Monster Hunter World is in the number five spot and a game like Spider-Man is in the number eight spot because there was a lot of people that were giving me shit about my uh, selection about Red Dead Redemption 2 being number six. And I was like, I, I just clearly you don't listen to the podcast if you are curious as to why i put it so low not that i think that a game is bad i think it's amazing in a variety of ways it just wasn't my favorite but yeah this list is all about personal pleasure you derived from these games and exactly. that's not something that i like you how can... sexy you just did that. i did that for you samir <laughs> that's not something you can debate you can't say you enjoyed i don't know spider-man more than red dead redemption or something like that you can't tell someone sure that. i think people just get conf like or not confused but like i think i think the natural inclination is whenever you put a list out especially if it's top 20 yeah people are assuming it's meant to be more critical versus like no this is what i personally enjoyed and nobody reads andrea you know this so even if you'd put in context <laughs> that it was your personal list they're like no she's saying this and you're like it's well that's why when i tweeted it i said it's not up for debate it's just for your mm -hmm. observation and if you are interested don't uh, at me yeah well i mean people added me anyway because <laughs> no, i know, know they don't know how to read as you mentioned but it was um it was interesting seeing people's responses and a number of people saying you know there's games on this list that they hadn't played or that they had heard good things about. Uh, several people reached out about Legend of Soulguard being like, hey, I'd never heard of this game, and it was like, oh, it's a mobile game that I spent way too much time with, and I just bought another pack of diamonds yesterday. Yeah, um, girl, diamonds. <laughs> Get them creatures. But I've gotten into like the high level play now, and it's like I'm like all in. I'm like super stoked about this game. Um, anyway, two quick pieces of news before we move on to Brittany's top 20. Um, Celeste is going to be adding farewell levels in the new year. So Polygon wrote this up. Creator Matt Thorson last week said the new content was coming in a tweet celebrating the game's sales and thanking everyone who made it a hit. More than 500,000 players, by the way. We're working on some farewell Celeste levels, he said. Expect them in early 2019. So that's exciting. A few extra <laughs> levels. It'll be interesting to see how they tie them in narratively to everything that happened in the game. Isn't that game also coming to Game Pass? Oh, it's coming to Xbox Live Games with Gold in it was gold. Okay. January. So if you guys have Xbox Live Gold, there you have absolutely no excuse not to play Celeste. Like It's amazing. So good. Go team. And rah, playing rah. with an Xbox One controller way better than playing a handheld on the say. switch <laughs> yeah <laughs> the precision you need in that game is important and i wish i had played more with a pro controller but i think by the time i um got a couple of hours in i was, had kind of trained myself to use the little nub on the switch on the joy cons <laughs> But um, but yeah, so that's exciting. Another piece of brief news. Monster Hunter World is getting an Assassin's Creed crossover event. So that's actually happening right now. So the write-up comes from Game Informer. Capcom Stealth launched a new crossover event for Monster Hunter World, this time crossing over with the Assassin's Creed series because we saw they had previously done it with um, Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. And then there was one with Final Fantasy? No, Who were they the that? other one? I don't remember. Was what the Street other one. Fighter? There's Who definitely was in there? Street Fighter costumes in there too. I thought there was something else. It'll come to me. Um, yeah. The SDF, the Silent Deadly Fierce event, lasts until <laughs> January 10th and has players facing off against nimble, fierce, and impetuous monsters to earn Senu's Feather. The event features new armor that makes players look like Bayek from Assassin's Creed Origins and the Assassin's Hood tool, which resembles the outfit Ezio wore in Assassin's Creed 2, and grants additional damage when attacking monsters out of stealth, as well as additional movement speed while running, climbing, and crouch running. <laughs> that's an assassin's creed special the Ooh, crouch, run. crouch running i mean it's hard to do that's uh, true i guess i haven't tried to crouch run recently crouch running is like not easy <laughs> can we try this when we're all together next time we'll just like, make a video of us trying to crouch run yeah i'm in that's it's also what i feel like even like a, in red dead like when you're down and you're like running along i'm like oh that's, 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 that's my back hurts just thinking about it <laughs> Um, sorry, PC players. The event is currently not available, uh, but they are saying it's going to arrive sometime at a later date. So, yeah. So if you, you have a couple of days left, you guys want to get in and get that Assassin's Creed stuff in Monster Hunter. I've been talking to some of the 
players in the What's Good Guardians Destiny clan about jumping back into Monster Hunter and, and, and getting excited about it. Um, but I've actually jumped into another game, which I'm going to talk about in the next section of the of the show. <laughs> so, um, any um, <sighs> any surprises for you in my list? Were you like, huh? What's that game doing? I'm there? surprised Far Cry even made it on your list. You know, it's an interesting one because when I originally put the list together, it didn't make it the first time. Um, and I went back and was like, particularly the the bottom 10 games were the ones that were the toughest for me to to think about and go like, hmm, OK, hmm. which of which of the best of the rest do I want to include? And I really did enjoy Far Cry as much as I had some issues with how they kind of rounded out the narrative in that game. I still think they designed a really fantastic open world that had a lot of personality with some really interesting NPCs and the ability to, you know, roll around with a giant bear or a cougar mm -hmm. was cool. And I, I I had fun. It was it was a well polished game. Did it have some bugs? Yeah, of course it did. But I think I had a lot of fun with that game and I thought that it deserved a place on the list. I didn't think it was a bad or broken game in any way. I just think that it could have improved in key elements, but it wasn't bad enough that I was like, no, it doesn't deserve a spot. I'm kind of surprised Overcooked 2 is number 19. I thought it would be a little higher. Well, I like playing that game a lot. It's super fun, and playing it co-op, especially with you girls, is always, you know, a good time. But I, I think, think that... Fuck with that. <laughs> Fuck no, I stay far away from that. <laughs> okay, it's an interesting, stressful time. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't wait to know. talk about hands-on section because, uh, anyways, go on. <laughs> okay. Um, it didn't make it higher because as much as I love that game, I feel like they reused a lot of the same gameplay elements from the first one, which is a, which is not a bad thing, right? It's like a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? But mm -hmm. that's why it wasn't higher because I didn't think that they – um, did a ton of innovation and not that every game needs to, but I had to pick a reason, right? Like when you're talking about the top 20 best games, you have to start splitting hairs in order to like make decisions, right? Yeah. Indeed. All right. Let's do okay. my list. Yeah. Give it to me. <clears throat> Number one. And this is, this is, these kind of lists are so hard because I feel like I, the more I stare at it, the more I want to tweak it and move things around, but I'm going to stick with what it is. It's Number just one. video games. No one's dying. It's okay. I know, but I care about video games, Stimer, a lot. I know that you do. And I'm passionate. Okay. Number one, Red, Red, <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2. Number two, God of War. Number three, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Number four, Spider-Man. Number five, West of Loathing on the Switch. Number six, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And I actually have 20.5 games, which I know isn't really possible, but too bad. Because like I, I couldn't figure out where to put this. And I, I don't know. I didn't want to reshift everything. No, six and a half is Gris. Oh. <laughs> I, didn't want to re I didn't want to shuffle everything over again because I put this together last minute. Um, number seven, Detroit Become Human. Number eight, Dragon Quest XI. Number nine, Octopath Traveler. Number 10, Nino Kuni 2. Number 11, Vampire. Number 12, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Number 13, Balloons Tower to Defense 5 on the Switch. Number 14, Florence. 15, Moonlighter. 16, Cattails. 17, Monster Hunter World. 18, Far Cry 5. 19, Full Metal Furies. And 20, A Way Out. Dun, dun, dun. I'm writing all this people down. People are cleaning like right outside my window and it's freaking me out. Wait, what's happening? <laughs> There's people cleaning like the common <laughs> areas. <laughs> Just okay, like, what was oh that? Cattails? Um, I don't know. Uh, 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 Monster Hunter World. I don't know. It's your own list. I don't list. have it memorized. I don't have this shit memorized. Okay, this is a really fascinating list, Brittany. I, I, I have, I have questions. Give me them. Like, I have answers. How did Florence get so far down the list? Above, va below vampire. Okay, so Florence. So Florence. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> I didn't. No, it's okay. I was I was trying to find. I was like, where is it? So yeah, these this was a list of games that either 
I just had a lot of fun playing and that I was really looking forward to playing and continue playing or if it connected with me on a certain level. Now, obviously, Florence is a very emotional story and it's really impactful, but Vampire, I was just super into everything about it. it obviously, they're, they're so different, so you can't even compare them as games, but I True. enjoyed my time with Vampire just overall a lot more than Do you think that's because there was more time to spend with it? I mean, it could have been, sure. I mean, that makes sense, right? You get more involved with the characters and the setting. But I just really liked what Vampire did, and it was so different. And I hope to see more of that. Of that, I guess I can't call it a series, but I'd like to see more within that IP going forward. Just it needs to be polished up a little bit. But it was really fun. Yeah, I really liked. I liked how clever they were with the motion controls with it, and like trying to make I, I, just a lot of the things that they did gameplay wise there made it feel like more than just a tapping game, you know, like a shitty like Pokemon game, game like you think of. Tap, 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 tap. Um, yeah. So Florence is also on my list. My list is obviously super short because uh, I didn't feel like listing them out. Let's just be honest. I'm lazy. Um, <laughs> but so <laughs> uh, should I wait for you, Andrea? I see her typing. I, so list. I was just typing Britney's top, Britney's top two. I mean, Red Dead, you know, we, last week you said that was your game of the year and God War number two. Kingdom Come Deliverance at number three over Dragon Quest, Octopath, and Nino Cooney. That to me is a big shock that you put Kingdom Come up that, that high. That is only because you said it was so broken that you had to leave it. It didn't start off that broken. It didn't start out that broken. The game got progressively more broken the more they tried to patch. Just like real life. Right. And the same thing became an issue. It was exactly. Simon's <laughs> dropping all these knowledge bombs, and I am here for it. <laughs> and it started getting to the point where during fast travel, the game would just crash randomly, consistently, maybe once every 45 minutes or so, and it just became a little unbearable. But there was a, a, a time where that was all I wanted to do with my life. I was staying up till 2 or 3 in the morning playing it, so I was thinking about, I really liked the survival elements of it, which is something really rare for me. I liked how it was a realistic medieval time era, and that's something that's right up my alley. And I just had a lot of fun with it, and I still want to go back and play it. It's just, lol, when's, <laughs> when am I going to be able to do that? Because it was, I don't know, girl, we got a whole bunch of shit coming out pretty soon. I know, that's what I'm saying. So I don't know if I ever will, but I think about that game fondly, and it did provide, I don't know, like 50 plus hours of entertainment, at least, if not more. I played it for a long time, and then it just, unfortunately, kind of broke itself into a million shattered pieces of sadness. It makes me That's also true. sad that Assassin's Creed is not on this list at all. I, I like, know because I didn't play enough of it. Because this is by far <laughs> like it. one of the best, like arguably the best Assassin's Creed ever made. I know. I, it's it's one of those weird Solitary things that tier. I don't. <laughs> a tear falls. I don't know why those games just don't click with me. I, like I said, when I see Jason playing it, I'm super into it. But the minute I have the controller in my hands, I'm like, ah, I don't know. It. Uh, I'm okay. I don't know. It's so weird. Maybe I wondered if Ubisoft released another Assassin's Creed game, but didn't call it Assassin's Creed. If there's some weird mental block now I have in my head, mm. if maybe they called mm. it Kill People Game, <laughs> Kill People Stealth game. Kill, just call it Stealth Kill. <laughs> stealth Kill the game. <laughs> That's hilarious. The stealth you could call it like the Stealth Code. Stealth something. Well, and for how much you like Far Cry Five, to see at the very bottom of the list is interesting too. Far Cry. So this is the the I curse punch of Far it into Cry. The sun. <laughs> oh, Just holy one. shit! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> it upsets me. I think about I, when I think Goodbye back on that game, I get mad. But like the not with cheeseburger and not with peaches. They are national treasures. Love them. Hug them. Kiss them. Big hugs. They're great. Right. I think. Okay, so the problem with Far so when Andrew and I did the preview event, you saw it. I was like, oh my god, this is so much fun, blah, blah. and it was a lot of fun. But obviously, the formula really got repetitive. And but the the unfortunate reality is, and I'm very transparent about this, is I stopped playing Far Cry Five for God of War, and then trying to go back to Far Cry Five after God of War was just a big mistake. And anything else I played after God of War for a while just kind of was like tainted until I started playing Dragon Quest Eleven, which was so much different that I it was you couldn't compare it. Not that you can compare Far Cry and God of War, because they're two obviously very different as well, but uh, something about it. I don't know. The way that they tried to do the narrative just completely turned me off. Like, it was borderline ridiculous. And I'm not even talking about the ending. I'm talking about the way that they structured any storyline mission 
mm -hmm. just ticked me off eventually. It was too repetitive. Didn't feel like any of these characters had any depth to them whatsoever. And I was just like, it, Far Cry is a fun game to go dick around in, but to me it was ultimately not a game that I, I think I only finished that game because I forced myself to. Because I was like, well, I made it this far. I may as well just go ahead and finish it. And that, I think, was why I look back on it with less than fond memories. Is because I was kind of like, no, just put the pedal to the metal, just go through it and get it done. Yeah. And the last missions that I had, I hated so much. The airplane mission. The airplane yeah. mission. I, I have no words for the amount of hatred in my heart for that mission. And, and then to the, like the cherry on top was the ending, and I was just like, all right, whatever. Like, that was a video game that existed this year, but to me, it, I don't know. I still like the general formula of Far Cry, but no thank you. And also no thank you. I wish that this game that they had just announced was next, like, 2020. Need a year. Need a breather. Need a breather. Yeah. Get for space. Or she'll also want to punt you into the sun. A little bit. A little bit. Why are you doing this? Well, I find it weird because, like, they learned their lesson with Assassin's Creed. Or at least they, they, they say that they did. Who knows? But, you know, it's like, oh, oh, we shouldn't put this out every year? Like, people have fatigue? And then they're like, well, maybe, surely not on this. <laughs> surely not. I think, surely not. Yeah, it was interesting because I think they just posed New Dawn as something bigger than it actually is. If they had made it seem more like Blood Dragon, like, hey, this is just an expansion for Far Cry 5, it would have probably gone over a lot better because that's essentially what it is. It's just yeah. a big ex story expansion, standalone expansion for Far Cry 5. Far Cry 5.5, whatever you want to call it. This isn't like a... I hope that they call it... I, would, I want a game to be called 5.5. That, that seems 5. like something 5. like Devolver Digital would do. They would just like hit mm -hmm. it on the nose and be like, yeah, obviously this is it's, not this a full is, sequel. This is not a full game. It's um, fine. <laughs> but who knows why these companies make the decisions that they do. It's money. Business. Who business, money, business, money. Business. Exactly. Uh, Simon, mm -hmm. you have a top five. Brittany, thank you for putting your list together, by the way. I do. You're welcome. I have a top five and then two honorable mentions. Okay. Um, number one, again, so disclosure is that I have not finished Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm 70% through the story now. I should finish it soon. So if there's any flopping to happen on this, I'll let you know. But if, as it stands, God of War is number one. Red Dead Redemption 2, number two. Um, Spider-Man, Florence, and Detroit. So, like, these were all games that I picked basically because I had either some sort of an emotional investment in them or I sat and thought about them a lot or they were just fucking fun. Spider-Man, just a fun-ass game. And, like, I loved what they did with the narrative. I loved the relationship development in that that entire storyline. Um, so there was just... And, like, God, like, how satisfying is it to swing through the city? Hell, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to do. Um, so that's... I mean, they're sort of obvious-ish choices. So, like, there's nothing terribly controversial on there, I don't think. Uh, but my honorable mention is, of course, Hero U by... Oh, yes. My beloved adventure game needs a nod. Um, I just haven't finished it, so I feel like I can't really put it on a on a top list yet. Um, and then Assassin's Creed Odyssey, because I really like that, but also haven't finished it. No, but no in general, that the formula of Assassin's Creed Odyssey is like my jam. Um, would Nino Kuni 2 have been your third honorable mention? Yes. I actually okay. thought about it. Then I was like, this is getting ridiculous. And I don't want to end up making a longer list. <laughs> <Not> everyone <laughs> needs a podium. They don't Not need everyone ribbons. needs a trophy. But I love, I did really like Nino Kuni. It was great. Yeah. It's horrible. It's a horrible game. That's a great yeah, list. That's, that was a feel good mm -hmm. game. I can't, I can't pick apart your list, man. And it's it has three PlayStation exclusives in it. <laughs> Oh hey. no! I, okay, next year, like, so I made this dumb tweet, which has gone, gone a little bit bigger than I thought it would. Hey, everyone uh, loves that tweet, man. It's great. So if you haven't seen it, if you don't follow me on Twitter, good for you. Stay off Twitter. It's a cesspool. Um, no, don't. You should follow at Steimer. At <laughs> or you could do E I M E R. I really hope you do know how to spell my name at this point. Thank you. I'm just um, bad at spelling out loud. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, it's basically just a joke about how my Xbox has this feature where it auto turns on if I turn on the TV. Someone told me how to turn it off, but I went through looking for this 
thing and I can't, I need to Google it because their instructions were incorrect. Um, and like the Xbox is always like, oh, hey, like you looking for me? And I'm always like, no. No. And so I like switch the input to the PlayStation because right now I'm playing Red Dead. My Red, Red Dead I'm playing on my PS4. Um, but people were like, thankfully I didn't get too much <laughs> hate. There were definitely a few people who were like, oh, PlayStation fangirl. And I was like, y'all, I am so stoked for Crackdown. Leave me alone. Uh, yeah. Which we'll talk about later. But You can't like a thing that makes sense to like a thing without being called a fangirl or a fanboy. Yeah. Right. I'm like, this is just a joke about how like overeager this Xbox is. It'll get its time. Just not right well, now. Yeah, no, the 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 year of the Xbox is on the horizon. It's it is. It's gonna happen Those sooner seeds, than later. They are sure. planted and they are and, just they're like they're just growing. They're just little baby seeds. And right little sprouts and that beautiful green sun will rise beyond the horizon and shine its green glowy lights of happiness. Yeah, why do and, they I don't know. Green, green lights at everything that they do. Oh, you mean for Xbox. I was really confused. I was like, are, yeah, I'm you so... know, the green sun. Xbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neon green, I should say. I, I was like, Brittany, are you having a stroke? Do you think the sun is green? <laughs> green eggs and ham. That makes no sense. Yes. <laughs> yes. Great. Love it. Thanks. Amazing. Love you. Cool. All right. Well, let's move on to our gaming resolutions for 2019 so i haven't put much thought into this i'm not gonna lie so <laughs> let's okay. start by well let's just recap what we what we did yes. last year and how we did so i went back to our old episode and i listened to what each of us kind of talked about what our goals and resolutions were for 2018 so steimer said that she wants to embrace the philosophy of leaving a game behind when you're not liking it. And you used South Park, the stick of truth as an example saying, mm -hmm. I just am not enjoying my time with this game. Why am I still playing it? Do you feel like you embraced that philosophy in 2018? Not in the beginning of the year. Cause like I said, I forced my way through far cry. Um, but otherwise, yes, generally like I have stopped playing games when I, when they have lost interest to me. Now that means I'm not finishing most of the things that I play at this point in my life, which doesn't, but then that also makes me feel kind of shitty, but whatever, it's fine. Um, <laughs> to me, it's better than like wasting my time. True. So I'm kind of actually, we'll get to that later. So you can keep going. But. Uh, you also said that you want to read more books, solve more puzzles and relearn how to play your flute. Did two out of the three of those. Hey, that's I've good. definitely read more this year. I have a puzzle book that I sort of fell off towards like like this past month, but otherwise had gotten up in the mornings, would have my coffee, and would just sit there and do some word puzzles. Um, and that was really nice. So I'm going to continue doing that. Good for nice. You. And you also said you want to play Earthbound. I never did, and here's why. Every time I feel like I am like, pretty, should I play Earthbound? You always say no. You always are like, no, no don't that's do that. not fair. You're, no, you legitimately, every single time you've been like, don't do that. Maybe play something else first. And I'm like, but. <laughs> I think you asked if it was between Earthbound or Super Mario RPG. No, you 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 offered up Super so you, Mario so RPG. So you off, you said, should I play Earthbound? And I said, you should play Super Mario RPG. Yes. Okay, no. So that's, that's not the message I'm trying to send you, baby girl. Okay. The message I'm trying to send is if you are going to play this game, you need a guidebook. That's all I'm saying. I need saying. you is what you're saying. I, mean, I sure, need you to I, come to my house and sit here with me and play Earthbound. I would 100% live that life with you. Okay. Um, yeah, so no, like definitely everyone should play Earthbound. I, I think they should. But it's definitely the kind of game, that game shipped to the player's guide for a reason. It's very obscure, very wacky. And if you are used to the, shall I say, hand-holding and tutorial system of today's games, you How will dare you? be What the fucking? <laughs> tutorial system. That's why I hesitated. I knew I was going to piss someone off. <laughs> no, you're right. It's not right. hand-holding so much as explaining mechanics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is how you play the game. The game Imagine if a game like you. Risk shipped with no instructions. I mean, that'd be bad. It would be bad. That'd but be then bad. there's also the counterpoint where it's like Monopoly. No one actually plays the real rules. They just what? I do. There are like specific rules for Monopoly that most people ignore. Well, you should play with some better tabletop players. Oh God. I'm okay, I'm gonna tell my parents you said that, but yeah. yeah you tell them. <laughs> Let's go, Steimer. Mom, Dad, Andrea wants to fight you. <laughs> no, not Mr. Steimer. I'm scared of him. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, Britt, you uh, said 
that you were going to wake up earlier at least by 7 a.m. to get more stuff done. How I don't go? know what I don't know what drugs I was on. I don't know what wild hair was up my ass when I made that resolution. <laughs> Wait, do you not? What time do you normally get up? You oh, said between around, 8 and 8.30 in the Yeah, episode. about 8, oh, 8.30, okay. sometimes a little later. I mean, I stay up really late. I'm up to at least usually like 1 or 1.30 normally. Uh, so, yeah, I'm in bed by like 9.30 or 10. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so LOL totally did not happen, nor will that ever happen. But um, good for me <laughs> for at least being a young, ambitious fool. You also Sweet. said that you want to set your phone down a little more and spend more time playing games. Yeah, I'm really good at this now. And yeah, it annoys good, people. Because when I text you to be like, yo, let's get into a party, you never respond. I know. True that. That is the plight of being Britney's friend. <laughs> uh, no, it's, I know. I have to find a happy balance. I've actually considered getting a phone, like a stupid little throwaway phone that I can just text on. That way, if like you guys want to get in touch with me or family does, but it's just the people. And you I'm, want gonna, a pager, I'm sorry. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a lot of people hit me up with their bullshit, and it's like, I don't care. I mean, I don't want to, you know, uh, anyway. So, so what you're saying is I need to, like, train some carrier pigeons and then yes. get them to go to your house. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Or we no, just I, need to get you to turn the messages back on in PlayStation Network because I can text you through PlayStation messages and be like, let's play. Can you, you can set it up so it's only specific people that can send that to you. Correct. Oh. So like, do that so that we are greenlit. I didn't know that. Uh, this changes everything. Let That's us great. help you. Yeah, let no, that would be our friend. That would be wonderful. Um, so yeah, I did, I would say I was good at that. I'm kind of good at just throwing my phone across the room and leaving it there for extended periods of time. Yes, That's you are. good. You also said you're going to play and finish an SNES game that you never got to round to, like the old Final Fantasy games pre-Final Fantasy VII. <sighs> no, I didn't do this, unfortunately, which makes me sad. I know you were probably very thrilled, very excited. You're doing cartwheels right now because it was I'm, giving crap for playing the retro games. Yeah, no, old. I was against this never but immediately it after you said it. I was like, this this is a terrible idea. Break. Stop it. <laughs> no. Well... You're welcome, Andrea of 2018. I failed. No, but what I will say is I have greatly varied the kinds of games I played this year, and that's mostly thanks to my Nintendo Switch. And so I did play old-looking RPGs, like Dragon Sinker was something that I really liked. Um, it's 8-bit RPG. So no, I didn't do that, but I did uh, get to play some other stuff that's kind of like that. So yay. Can I get at least like a third of a point? Sure. Yeah. I mean, cool. this isn't a point system. We're just, you know, just merely feel recapping. Better. Um, so for my resolutions, I said I wanted to make more time to play video games as well, specifically finish more games like indie games. And I threw down a number that I wanted to finish at least two games a month for a total of 24 games. I regret to inform everyone that I did <laughs> not finish 24 games. I absolutely played 24 games, but did not roll credits on said 24 games, which is a bummer. Because I think if I had been more strategic with the games that I picked, then I could have played more if I'd picked more smaller titles instead of, like, always playing Destiny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, it happens. It, it's true. <laughs> um, so that's a, another thing that's going to continue into 2019 to, to play more games and to play more styles of games. Um, I said that I wanted to invest time in some genres that I don't spend a lot of time in or play games from studios I don't normally play. And so I think I really did accomplish that um, in certain aspects. For example, Celeste was a big surprise for me. I generally hate those type of um, retro art style, like pixel-based uh, Metroidvania platformers. I normally avoid those like the plague. But I heard so many amazing things about Celeste, I just had to go check it out. And now it's, you know, one of my top games of 2018. So I'm really glad that I, I did. And I sat down and I really kind of forced myself to play through that. And I do want to do that more um, in 2019. I heard a lot of people recommend Subnautica to me as a game that I want to check out, especially uh, another game, Into the Breach, is a mm. strategy game that a lot of people recommended to me that I want to check out and really just kind of expanding my horizon in other games and not not spending too much time with games as live services. Not that I don't love that, not that it's not important to play the things you love, but, you know... Try new things. Expand your good. horizons. Exactly. Exactly. 
And the the last thing I said I wanted to do is that I would I told Alexa Ray that I would play Final Fantasy, a, a Final Fantasy. I said I would try to finish Final Fantasy IX specifically. Britt then told me, I asked Britt, how, how long is it going to take me? And you said, well, it'll take you anywhere from 50 to 80 hours. And I was like, wait, can I just put it on easy? And you were like, baby girl, there is no easy mode in Final Fantasy. Um, there wasn't. <laughs> At no, the time. there wasn't. And so I, I made it to like, I was like five hours into Final Fantasy IX and I noped right <laughs> out of that. <laughs> hey, you tried it. Ooh, yeah, at least you did. tried it. I did. So at least I have a little bit of an idea now. Um, and I named my characters after pop stars. And it was great. <laughs> Uh, good old JT. Oh my gosh. I was trying to have a conversation with you about these characters. I'm like, oh yeah, Steiner and Vivi and Zidane. And you're like, okay, that's JT. And I don't know even what you called the other Brittany characters. or whatever. Like, um, yeah, yeah, I don't even uh, know. Vivi, I named um, Kesha. And Kesha, Steiner, right. I named the Hoff. <laughs> I no wonder that game never stood a chance. <laughs> Well, because I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to rename them until I had already named them something else. And I was like, this is a mistake. <laughs> I should have left them You're up like, the original oh, no. names. How's it going? Oh, the Hoff. Hoff. <laughs> Breaking that wall down. But it made for yeah. fun times. But it did. Yeah. It's a good story. Um, so, yeah. So, that was kind of a fun look back at, at what we where we were at at this time last year. So, let's just maybe, um, to keep it simple pick like one or two things that you're trying to do for 2019. I have three Three? because I kept it. I kept it with three because of this format. Okay. And technically I am cheating slightly only because I'm sort of adapting from both yours and uh, Brittany's from last year because I like them and I think that it's good. Uh, One of that is, is the sort of try more genres or try games that I wouldn't normally and not genres, I guess try more games that I wouldn't normally pick up i think a great example of this will be resident evil that is not a game i want to play are you gonna play it i have zero desire to play it but i need to try it just so that Brittany will love me i think i could try right now (laughs) (laughs) Um, so like so things like that where i'm like okay this is not a game that i would typically go for kingdom hearts is another example maybe january will just be the month of games i did not think i would want to play but i want to at least give them a shot um and see if any of them actually stick if they don't <laughs> then they don't <laughs> um, i love britney so britney's writing in the show notes she is going to play re2 you heard it here motherfuckers <laughs> amazing <laughs> yeah we've got it we've got it uh, recorded um okay what is your number two um so it's make more scheduled times for games which is the opposite of what i said last year where i was like i want to spend less time on games but then i feel like the balance was sort of off so now this year, it's like, okay, I need to figure out a way to introduce gaming into my schedule in a way that makes sense for me. Um, and a sort of like side, I guess this, technically I have this down as a second point, but it's not really. Um, and part of that is like more time for social gaming. Like I'd love to set up more gaming dates with you guys. Like that's a thing that I always find really fun. That was some of my favorite memories from this past year were just like when we were shooting the shit, when you and I were playing, trying to play Sea of Thieves for a bit, Andrea. <laughs> yeah. Like it was, it's just fun. Or when we were playing Red Dead online, like I love that. It's great. Um, so I want to do more of that. We'll set well, up Anthem. We have so many games to do it with. We have Anthem, yeah. we have The Division, oh, we have Crackdown. Division. I'm going to make you bitches play it. So like, let's go. I want to do more of that. There was one other thing I wrote here that I can't reread. What did it say? Well, oh, ding. this is for because I have an issue with playing games on easy. I don't do it. So I need to give myself the permission to drop games down to easy, which will help me enjoy them more and get through them. Because what happens is I'll start playing a game. Celeste is a great example of this. I dig it, but I'm like, I'm just getting frustrated and the amount of time I'm spending on it starts to irritate me. So then my reaction is to put it down and never touch it again. Whereas if I just embrace the baby ass baby mode, embrace the baby (laughs) ass baby mode on certain games, there are obviously other games where I'm fine and I don't need it, but I need to, I need to acknowledge my limits mostly with time and frustration levels because I don't have a lot of patience. So like just, that's a good one. I think that's a really good one for you because that's dumb. (laughs) 
like, that's good for you. Yeah. I feel, yeah, because you've been wanting me to turn Celeste down on easy, I feel yeah. like, for months now. Oh, wow. And I just yeah. haven't. And that's, that's yep. silly. Yeah. yeah. It is. Good for you. Okay. So my resolutions. Number one is not gaming related, and it's the fucking number one resolution that everybody has, but I'm getting old and my back hurts, is I have to get more active. And so to do this, I have locked down a personal trainer for at least three months to see how that goes. I have the whole home office, not office, home gym thing where I have the treadmills and I have the weights, but it's, I don't know what I'm doing half the time. And I can watch the DVDs, blah, blah, but I think I need to be committed to and obligated to leave the house and go see someone who knows what the hell they're talking about. So I found a really cool dude. Um, Jason and I are both going together and it's three days a week. So I'm really excited to kick that off later this month. That's so really hopefully... exciting. And yeah. Is, no, that's really great fun. because there is, um, I also have like a new trainer guy again. And one of the things that I had forgotten is just like how, even if your form is off slightly, like it totally screws up the thing. Like you, it, you could either be hurting yourself or just not doing something that's completely ineffective. So I think it's great that you have a trainer, especially if you have any parts of you that are hurting, they can help adjust so that if you're like, they're like, oh, this move hurts. They're like, just do it slightly this way. And then, yeah. you know, you can kind of do, anyways, I'm happy for you. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited. So hopefully next year when we're recapping these resolutions, I will still be with said sir. Otherwise I'm going to look silly, but Next one, oh, this is an easy one, and this is one I'm totally going to be able to accomplish, but it counts, is I want to get a new studio set up in my other room in the house with, like, a desk and a computer and all that because as much as I love this green screen, it's just, like, kind of burning my retinas. And so I am excited to go in the other room where I have all of my favorite memor memorabilia from video games. I got my Earthbound stuff in there, my Final Fantasy, my Resident Evil, my Zelda stuff, and I think that would make for a much more interesting backdrop than this. Girl, I'm ready so that, to help you accomplish this mission. Yes. I have no idea what to get, what to look for. I need help. So I think I we'll be able to do that I might have to bring our unnamed producer with me on this task because yeah. this producer is really good at knowing which cable goes where. And I've, I'm pretty good. But he always thinks of these weird random connectors that I'm like, what? how does that piece even exist? So Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a parte. Bring all of the people and all of the help because I need it. Number three is, oh, I want to, so I'm, like I said earlier, I'm happy with how varied my games are that I play now. They're really random and wacky and I feel like I can pick up almost any genre and get some enjoyment from it. But I want to do one of my favorite genres more, which are the horror, obviously. I love scary games and I want to do more Let's Plays with them and upload them to our channel because it's just something that I've always loved doing is having a big tall a tall glass of whiskey because I need it and just playing something freaky on Steam. You can find so many interesting like three to five hour scary games on there and they're usually really fun. So I want to do more of that. I'm all about nice. that. It's great. I yeah. mean you you can do that just by yourself. <laughs> You can go play those scary games. These are my ride or dies, friends. They got my back. <laughs> Listen, go for it. Every once in a while, I'm down to dip my toe in the survival horror or just plain horror genre with you for the sake of the of the funny stuff. But um, you know, it's not my thing. No, no, I'm I not know. very good. That's at it. I love you. Yeah, I appreciate it when you two play them for me. It means a lot. I want to do more slender with you, Stimer. That sounds oh, really God. dirty, but I like it. Yeah. But uh, also, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, but no. <laughs> well, I'll I mean, take I Resident did, Evil I too. It's enjoy, fine. I did enjoy the lights off when we played it, but also, again, I don't know that I've ever sweat so much in my life. Like that was oh, no. a. I pulled so, muscles real bad. I think my exact quote was, "I pulled something in my sternum." Yeah, I think you did yeah. say that. Well, I found the right <laughs> HDMI cable for that infrared camera, so just let's leave. go. Oh God, we could uh, do another one. We could. What? <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> oh dear. So I'm just like, but why? But why? But poor <laughs> Um, but those are all really great. Um, great goals, Britt. Um. I have similar goals to the both of you, um, but slightly different. 
Um, so I'm going to once again challenge myself to actually finish two games a month um, for 2019 um, because I think that I just need to start looking at some smaller games and just playing it and then knocking it out and then moving on and finding a, a good ba healthy balance between the games and services that I enjoy and also playing new experiences because there was a lot that I just didn't get a chance to try this year and that's that's a bummer and then the time keeps going on and then more games come out and then I've never played that thing so I want to yep. finish um two games a month for every month for a total of 24 games you've got this minimum yes yeah I haven't looked to see how many games Ray played last year when I made this goal I uh, told you guys that my friend Ray who used to be the reviews editor at uh, EGM Yay. and now he works as a entertainment writer for for DC Comics um, um, over at uh, Warner Brothers he played 89 games in 2017 I was just like, that's right. I remember that was conversation. A that's a lot of games. Um, so I, I can't remember where I think his total was at 60 or 70 this year. I'll have to wow. look it up, but yeah. Right. That badass. Right. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Who's got the time, Ray? <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. That's literally probably all he did. Um, I also want to spend, uh, more time playing or more time doing non-gaming things and being more productive with let me be specific I want to spend more time creating content that isn't video game related um, I've talked a lot in the last couple of years to you two and you know other friends of mine and other colleagues I have in the industry about some of my entertainment goals outside of video games outside of making the podcast and doing hosting you know at, at trade shows and conventions and things like that and like what that looks like and where that, where I want that to go and I have some ideas in mind and I really want to execute on those ideas in 2019 in a way that I'm no longer just posturing. I'm actually making something. I'm producing something. I'm editing something. I'm uploading something that people can watch. And um, that's my big goal for 2019 is to make non-gaming related content. Not that I don't love the stuff that we do here at What's Good and what I do with my friends over at Kind of Funny and all of the other media outlets that I work with throughout the year. But I have so many other interests that I don't ever really get to talk about um, in another venue. And so we're talking about what does that look like for what's good if we do something that's not video game related and I'm talking to some other partners. What's good wine? Hey, listen, I already bought the domain, so it's done. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, so yeah. I'm really looking forward to, to making more content and having like a concrete thing that I can look back on at this time next year, like week one, 2020 to go. I did the thing that I said I was going to do. And um, all of the studio changes that I've been working on over the break are really leading up to that and also leading up to us at, here at What's Good to be able to make more content and more types of content and to really kind of diversify the, you know, what you can watch here at What's Good Games. So that's a big, really like my biggest goal of, of 2019. And then my last goal is to... Um, to be a better friend and a better relative. And what I mean by that is I want to make a goal to call people more often, call my grandparents, call my friends that live in other states, call my parents more, in, send people messages out of the blue, send people cards on their birthdays, like in the actual mail instead of just an email or a text, and really just kind of reach out because the older I get, the more precious those relationships come to me. And I think a lot of us when we're in our 20s and we're like finally getting our freedom and really flexing our adult, you know, um, limits and going, oh, I can do whatever I want now. You maybe sometimes lose sight of the importance of those relationships, particularly with your family, because you kind of take it for granted that they're always going to be there and they're not. And that's a really hard part about life is that your family and friends aren't always going to be there. And so I want to make the most of the time that I have with the family and my friends that are in my life right now. And I feel like I've really put my career so far forward that I've neglected some of those relationships. And so I want to recommit to some of those relationships in 2019. That's amazing. And it's so great that you realize that now, because I feel like a lot of people never realize that until it's yeah. way, way, way too late. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great. 
yeah so those are my uh that's my and i feel like a, a terrible human because i only picked gaming ones but that's because <laughs> i thought we were supposed to no and like there was no rules to this at all and the reason i thought of these is because during the studio clean out the great like cardboard Church. boxing of 2018 um i found my old journals so every year for like the last eight years i've i've physically wrote down my goals for the year um, in January in this in this journal and it was really fascinating for me to go back and look at all of those goals and a consistent goal that I've had every single year was to be a better friend and then mm. I would list out specific ways I wanted to be a better friend that year but I kept that goal every year because I think we could always be a better friend to people or be a better husband a daughter a cousin a brother a mother whatever you yeah. are to somebody in your life and I think in a day and age where it's so easy to communicate, that communication can sometimes feel shallow. And Definitely. I don't, I don't want to go, go on a diatribe about text messages and Skype phone calls and Facebook posts and like whatever. I feel like it's great that we have more ways to stay connected to people. But I think that it's also important to use those thoughtfully and not just like shoot off a random, you know, goofy gif. <laughs> like maybe make it a little bit more meaningful is was my point for you kind of lose that personal touch yeah with people exactly yeah oh i think that's great all right well this was a very long first section back in 2019 so we're gonna take our first break of the show and when we come back we're gonna talk about what we played over the break hopefully you've played some cool stuff too so stick with us we'll see you in a minute Welcome back, everybody. It is the second segment of the What's Good Games podcast. And because I forgot to mention at the top of the show, this is your place for video game news, commentary, analysis, and funny stuff. Oh, my We're God. Rusty. The first show of 2019, we forgot to do it? I know. I dropped the ball. I feel like I just need to write it into the show notes so that way mm. I see it and I'll always read it. I'm not quite Ron Burgundy, but I'm close. Put it in the show notes. <laughs> And I, I love Lamp. <laughs> <laughs> I recently rewatched that movie because I hadn't seen it for a couple of years, and it still holds up. Very excellent. It's a good movie. Um, so this is the part of the show where we talk about what we've been playing, and because we've had some extensive time, there's quite a few games on this list. So let's see, Steimer, you've got quite mm. a few games. I actually saw you online playing Red Dead Redemption 2 the other day. Um, yes. So you've got Overcook, Gris, and Beat Saber. Wow. Yeah. What a cornucopia. Where would you like to start? Uh, Beat Saber only because it's the most... Well, that's not, it's not the most recent. Red Dead is. But um, Beat Saber because it was like... I wasn't expecting to play this. I went over to my friend's house for New Year's Eve. And we had like... A, we ate too much food and <laughs> sat on the couch. But then we brought out Beat Saber because we wanted to play the KDA song. And I was, like, watching other people play it, and I was like, I don't generally like rhythm games. But, oh, my God, do I want to smash a block with a lightsaber. Like, that just, <laughs> I want to do it. I want to do the thing real bad. So I got up there, and I did, I just did KDA once, and then I sat back down, and I was like, I want to play it again. I want to smash more blocks. So, like, <laughs> like, something about the feedback and, like, the motion and everything with it hit me in such a great way and i was like okay i kind of fucking love this and was not expecting to i know people talk about it all the time but i'm not really a vr person i do not have space in vr for my or space for vr in my house uh but you know being at someone who does that was kind of nice and then actually i downloaded that so i have a ready and waiting for me so oh my God. same you should it's fun oh. yeah one of the, the things... only thing i dislike hmm. oh go ahead no no you go ahead it's like so there's there are occasionally um walls that will come at you but because obviously you're wearing a headset i felt like i didn't quite know how far i needed to like step out of the way and i know it's but because it just felt like it was still at me right i'm like i've moved it uh, over here but it's still here because that's where the screen is i don't know that part was the only part that kind of fucked with my head a little bit mm -hmm. i'm sure if i got used to vr it would make more sense to me but since that was really the first that VR thing I'd played in quite some time. Um, but otherwise, like, oh my god, you guys are 
lightsabering those blocks is so fun. Ah, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm really glad that it's finally on PSVR uh, because we part of as part of what we were doing organizing our house over the break, we set up a dedicated PlayStation 4 Pro that's just for the PSVR. So now we have it on the other side of the entertainment center so we can always leave everything cabled in because that was a big kind of obstacle for me playing a lot of VR even though I had several VR games I loved in 2018 is that the cumbersomeness of having to unplug the HDMI cables and then plug them into here and then move all the cables out of the way and then set everything back up again. And I was just like, a lot of the times I couldn't be bothered, but when I did bother, I was like, oh yeah, there's a lot of really cool games on VR right now. So that's awesome. That's yeah. yeah. That's what I did too. I set up my PS4 Pro downstairs for VR. I got Tetris Effects and Beat Saber on it. Look at us all Ooh. doing the same shit. Yep. Yes. Great minds. Um, so you had briefly mentioned something about Overcooked when we were talking about our yes. top games of 2018. Because you were talking about how, like, there, it's... Here's the interesting thing about Overcooked. I feel like it always depends on your communication style with other people. And so I played the... I played... This is the original Overcooked. This is not Overcooked 2. But Alana and I have three start every level in the game and we did it fucking like it was nothing like cake like we just are we communicated super well even if somebody was fucking it up we knew it was just like a mechanical error it wasn't like they weren't not doing what they were supposed to do we were both pulling our weight i was like i feel like if there was an overcooked olympics her and i should be on a squad and we would crush <laughs> it because I was just like, I remember this game being so much harder. And like, I didn't think we were going to be able to do it because we're, there was just two of us, but we fucking like did it. We did maybe, it all. Maybe because every time we played together, we were intoxicated. <laughs> yeah. They may have been something, but we were also drunk when we were playing to be fair. Oh, right? well, there you go. <laughs> we had been drinking, but we're just, which is why a lot of like, again, any of those the mistakes we made were. <laughs> Mechanical oh, issues. Mechanical <laughs> issues. <laughs> Hand eye coordination lacking. Um, but it was great. And I looked at her and I was like, should we just get married? Is that what this means? Like, because <laughs> we didn't have, yeah. we never had an argument. We never, it was just fucking, it was like the nicest game of Overcooked the entire time. That's hey, great. That's crazy. Now we, now we need to do Overcooked too. Although I'm a little bit annoyed. So when we started playing together, I was at her house and I stupidly did not log myself in. It takes two seconds. Why didn't I do it? So I was earning achievements on someone else's account. <gasps> so I don't, have, I don't have all of the achievements in Overcooked. So don't fucking at me if you're like, oh, I looked at your gamer score. But I did do it with her. That's why I, I hide it under somebody else's name. <laughs> what? So that's why I hide my gamer score and my trophies. Uh, I, I don't. People, I don't, I don't care, want people but... harassing me with being like, you say you didn't get the trophy this. <laughs> Right, if people actually do that, they need a hobby and a life and they something do, better to do with their time. Oh my god. I want to drink this, but I know it's really cold. I'm not gonna. You got this. I believe in you. Oh no, my camera turned off. No, do it. Oh no, do look it. at the timer. She froze oh, again. such a cute, pretty smile. Oh, it okay, was. Oh, there you are. Oh, okay, she... I was going to take a picture. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. We can screenshot it afterwards. It'll still be in okay. the video. But yeah, it's really pretty. At least this my time, camera just froze keeps summer, turning off like this. Yeah. The face I never make. Is <laughs> <laughs> so that true? Uh, hey! Is that true? Is it, the irony of you saying that, though, is that you actually are happy a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, that the mm -hmm. saltiness is more of a on-camera persona that you embody. It's very true. Or I'm an not on not social super. media persona that you embody. But in reality, you're not that salty. You're very sweet. No. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, okay, so you played Overcooked, and you three-starred mm -hmm. every, level, every level with Alana, and mm -hmm. you also played some Gris, it looks like. Yes, I'm going to need to coordinate with you after this, Brittany, because since you finished it, and I, there's this one stupid thing I can't figure out how to get. Okay. And I need you to, I need you to help me through it. Because, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm at the last areas of the game, but I just, mm -hmm. I was, I'm looking at this light source I'm supposed to get, and I'm like, how the fuck... Do I get there? How do I get you? Okay, cool. Yes. Yeah. But otherwise, I love it. I think it's beautiful. Um, and what I appreciate about Gris is, I think this is sort of something you were 
talking about before, Brittany, is like, you can look into it at the symbolism, or you can do what I'm doing, which is literally just, this is a really pretty game, and it's chill, and I like it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Like, at the bottom base level, it's still a really good game, and it's nice, good, simple, clean fun. That's also really beautiful, has a great soundtrack. What more could yeah. you want? What more could you want? Yeah, um, since we're talking about it, I can just briefly mention. Yeah, yeah I finished I finished Gris, and it was, this is how it, it, it got really high on my favorite games of the year, because games rarely speak to me like this. I mean, Florence did, obviously, and I've talked about that at length, but this game, like Samer said, there's no text in it. There's no words. It's You can t- make it what you want to, and it just spoke to me in such a way that every time I would do something, it clicked in my head, like, this is representing this, and it made me so oddly emotional, and I'm like, am I getting ready to start my period? Like, why? Why am I so emotional? Right? I was walking on the treadmill, and Jason was next to me on his treadmill playing Smash Brothers. And I'm like, there's nothing how emotional. How does he play Smash Brothers on the treadmill? Yeah, he does, and he's good at it. I don't know how he does it, but yeah, he's... So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I was trying not to, like, start bawling, because it was such a sweet story, and... It, Maybe we can do a spoiler cast at some point where we can talk about what we took away from it. But what I was taking away from it just spoke to me on such a level that I, I was just like, oh, my God. So, yeah, highly recommend you play this. It's only, like, three to four hours, so it's not a long game or anything like that. But Yes. Oh. Cool. Indeed. Cool. Um, so, Brett, you've also played some other things. Speaking of Smash, yeah. you played some more Smash over the break. Yeah, I'm working on that spirit board, and I finally unlocked my boy Link, and because of that, I'm having infinitely more fun, because uh, I I just have no interest playing as any other character, because my whole my whole life, ever since I've started playing Smash, I've always been Link, and that's why I play Smash, so I can play as Link. It's just fun for me. Um, so I finally I unlocked him. Alone. I think a lot of people have their main, and that's the only person they want to play with. Yeah, which is why, again, I wish they would have let you at least just pick one main that you wanted to start with. Because that's why it was kind of felt like a slog in the beginning, because I didn't really want to play as Mario, and I didn't really care to learn how anyone else played. But, um, yeah, I'm playing as Link. I'm playing on normal, which I'm very proud of myself, because, like, usually I suck at fighting games. And it's easy, but, like, I'm totally a casual Smash player. I don't have any experience playing online with other people, so I know they'd kick my ass in a heartbeat, but it does make me feel kind of good to be, like, kicking ass easily in normal mode in Smash. I'm like, hey, look at me go. But it's fun. It's you know, it's the kind of game that I pick up for a couple hours. It's actually a great treadmill game. So going back to what you're asking, Steimer, how do you walk on the treadmill and play Smash? It works. I don't know how. I don't fall off, That's but I so don't. That's so strange to me because I can't even play that game sitting down. <laughs> so I can't imagine walking and trying to stay on a platform that I fall off of anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, what I found happens is because I think I get so pumped up from playing, I find myself like walking too fast and I start stepping on the plastic in the front of the treadmill. So I have to increase uh, my walking speed. So I don't like, gotta go, fa- must go faster, over. must go faster. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. But no, it's, it's fun. I don't think I'll ever do any of the online stuff, but the spirit board is, is good. I maybe have like eight or nine hours into it at this point, And I think people are completing it. I've seen people at 40 hours, so I still definitely have a ways to go, but it's a good time. Nice. Cool. Yeah. I noticed that Smash didn't make your top 20 games of 2018. No. I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I, I thought people would expect me to not put it up there, even though there was a lot of people who tweeted to me, like, where's Smash? And I'm like, I have openly said several times that I don't like Smash. So Smash will I never think... be on my list. But I thought I thought it maybe would have made the bottom of your list. Yeah, and maybe if I had, like, a... Yeah. Uh, see, I don't know, because I just... just came out too late? Well, not that. It's just I only really have a lot of fun playing Smash and playing as my boy, Link. And I literally just unlocked him like a week and a half ago. And it took me like, I don't know, 20 characters before I unlocked him, which actually I got pretty lucky. So, I mean, now I'm really having a good time with it. Like now it's super fun for me. Now I'm excited to pick it up and play it again. But that's probably why. Okay, that makes sense. Another mm-hmm. game I was surprised to not see on your list, and it probably was because you didn't spend enough time with it, was Divinity Original Sin 2 the definitive edition you have ee what's that i think i think it's enhanced edition enhanced mm-hmm. edition that might be correct okay <laughs> yeah so i just started this three days ago four days ago so obviously divinity original sin 2 was my game of the year last year and 
every time around this year, I get an, an itch for an RPG, which is why I'm playing Pillars of Eternity, which is why I'm playing Divinity Original Sin 2. I was playing Ashen for a little bit. Um, and oh, it's just so good. When the minute you fire that game up, all of that polish and all of those Larian Studio charm is just so... Yes, yeah, Stimmer, I see you, do you The definitive edition. Definitive, okay. Do you prefer... Or is Divinity overtaking Pillars for you right now, or are you still trying to play both? Oh, no. So Jason and I are playing Divinity Original Sin 2 and Definitive Edition together. But the game I'm playing by myself right now is Pillars of Eternity. Got it. Got it and got it, got Obsidian it. is insanely talented, but Larian Studios, just such, they're just masters of their craft. And they are just so goddamn good at what they do. And like I said, the minute I picked up the controller, we started playing all the attention to detail, all the voice acting in that game. This is like a 100-hour plus game. No, nothing, no stone is left unturned. There's so much detail in that, so much to uncover, and I've just reminded why I made my game of the year all over again. So good. That's awesome. I would like to play that with you ladies at some point. I don't know, it'll probably never happen. It just sounds good to say. Well, it could I, be fun you know, for a I couple hours. I played a substantial amount of that game earlier this year when I previewed it during Judges Week ahead of E3, and I'm with you in saying I was really impressed with the level of detail in that game as well. I think the fact that the combat is turn-based is gonna might, gonna be a deal breaker for me, and I know that it's a, kind of a modified turn-based. It's not the same as like a Final Fantasy, for example, but it still kind of brings me out of it just enough um, that it's gonna be hard for me to sink time in, particularly when I've been playing Diablo Three Eternal Collection on my Switch. And I'm like, yeah, isometric top-down action RPG. This is so good. <laughs> and I just, I really wanted Divinity to be that style of combat, and it's not. No, yeah, yeah it's very strategic. Um, it, we're like a turn-based battle. I think most people think of a three- to five-minute battle. These Divinity battles last from anywhere like 20 to 45 up to an hour um, per match because it's all strategy, and there's so many wheels moving and you have to know like okay if i do this this is going to cause there to be blood on the ground and then i can set that on fire and then i can create necrofire and then i can call it it's a, it's a lot blood is flammable yes or you can freeze it and then people walk on it and then they fall and then you can make it into steam and then blind people it's a lot that's why a lot of people who play divinity for the first time they'll hit me up on twitter because i talk about it a lot and they're saying they're really struggling with it and put it on baby ass baby mode and steal everything you can you can be a pickpocketer and steal everything. You that. have to. Yeah. No, I love stealing shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It's just so good. In <sighs> video games, I should say. In <laughs> video should games. clarify. <laughs> and you but, also yeah. played Ashen. So we got to play. Were we together when we played this at PAX? Um, was it? Or maybe no, this is another I game so. I played at Judges Week ahead of E3 at the Indie Night. Steimer, you were there, weren't you? I was. I did play Ashen with you. Okay. I think. Actually, let me Google it and make sure it's the same game. I'm okay. pretty sure it is. I think you did play this with me. Um, what do you think so far, Britt? I, okay. So it's very Dark Souls-esque, and I've never played Dark Souls, but all I know is it's like that with the heavy light combat, you have, you know, instead of having souls, it's something called, like, is that what you played, Steimer? Yeah, it's what, yeah. Okay. Yep. It's called, like, Scoria or something, and you have a gourd that you can replenish your health with, but you only have a limited amount of uses, and you use the Scoria to upgrade your stuff. I did play Salt and Sanctuary, so, it's, you know, I'm kinda have, I kind of have my bearings with this subgenre, I guess is what you'd call it. Um, it's it's fun. It's I, I, I burned out on it because I found the combat was just not... Um, it wasn't interesting enough. You only have your heavy and your light, and you have, uh, you know, you can do two-handed, one-handed sword shield, um, and you have different, I don't know, like clubs or swords or whatever you want to use. But it just wasn't varied enough that I felt invested enough to keep going. The world is beautiful, and it's fun to explore, and you find all sorts of fun things, and it's really great in co-op. The co-op system is a little wonky, so to invite someone into your game, you have to set a specific six, I think it's a six-digit code in your game, and then you have to tap up on the D-pad, and then that person has to enter in their six-digit code on their side of the game, so they match, and mm. then it takes anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute for them to come into your game. Uh, but the problem with that is it only works maybe like 75% of the time. And so okay. every time you, which is like, you might think, okay, but every time you go into your main town, it disconnects you, and then sometimes when you leave, it'll reconnect you. 
So it's a little buggy. It's a little frustrating. There were times we just stopped playing because we couldn't get into the same instance. But this is a 4-4's first debut indie game. So it's phenomenal. It's getting really great reviews. So I would say, you know, if that premise sounds fun, the Dark soul kind of, but it's colorful, open world-esque, and it's fun to play with another person. But I just kind of petered out after maybe like seven to ten hours because the, the combat just wasn't doing it for me. But yeah. Yeah, cool. Oh, so many RPGs. I love it. All RPGs all the time. RPG Factory. Which is Let's go. Like the exact opposite of what I was doing. Um, you played lots of shooty things and then one non shooty thing. Yeah, so I mean, I I've been I've always loved uh, shooters and action games in general. It's one of my favorite genres, and I have really dove back in into Destiny in a big way. And I talked about that quite a bit over the last couple of episodes, so I don't really need to go too much back into that. But have been doing the donning, baking a lot of cookies, riding around in my sleigh. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> It's been it's been fun to really I'm um, jumping back in and, and and power leveling because they have made some tweaks to let people who maybe got gifted destiny to for the holidays kind of get in and catch up to everybody who's grinding from 600 to 650 light level in the game. But I don't want to get too into the weeds about destiny because like I mentioned I've been talking about that quite a bit. But I did play. I've also been playing a lot of Legend of Soulguard, like a lot. Like a lot. <laughs> It's kind of bad. <laughs> um, okay, but how much is a lot? Is it like the game you wake up and play? I wake and then up and play it, and then in four hours I go back and collect my chests, and then I play some more, and then I play in the middle of the day. I play while I'm standing in line. I play. <laughs> oh my god! Literally all <laughs> the time. I'm playing this game, and so they um they have a event that they've been doing, a holiday event where there was a couple of different special creatures that you could collect during the event and it's been really fun getting them because one of the creatures is like super op there's this white called the glow fang and she <laughs> is amazing she's pretty much invincible and so like in the pvp section it's kind of like you gotta have her or you're screwed um <laughs> but in the other sections like she's got her her pluses and minuses and then they just did the glow book event which is like a big reindeer and it's a support character, and so in order to earn the glow buck, you had to go to the Scorcher Caves and knock down Scorcher Stones from the Scorcher Tree and collect a certain amount of stones to unlock the glow buck. It was, like, I know it sounds really obtuse, but it's really fun, and I've been having a no, lot of I fun. No, I did that. I lived that life for a while. It was yeah, fun. Thank you. Um, but it did mean that I ran out of diamonds because I got a little carried away in my reset because <laughs> obviously one of the big drawbacks of a free-to-play game is that the there are built-in timers and certain parts of the game are only available for x amount of times you have like three tries to do the bounties you have three attempts to do you know the treasure caves or whatever and if you want to do it again right away you have to pay diamonds to reset the timer and every time you reset the timer the price goes up which makes sense because they're trying to encourage you to go play the other parts of the game. And they provide enough different arenas that you can play the game without ever needing to reset the timers. Now, that being said, I do find the timers a little bit annoying. This is one of my pet peeves of mobile games in general is this idea that you're gating content that I could be playing with these artificial timers in order to get me to buy money or spend money in the game to unlock the timers. I would rather just buy the game from you. <laughs> let me just pay yeah. for the game and then let me play it as much as I want when I want. Because maybe I have four hours to play right now and I want to just play a bunch right now that I don't play for a couple of days. And instead they would want you to like, you know, they drip feed you. And so that whole part of the economy is super frustrating. And of course, for disclosure, I should have said this at the top. We did a sponsored stream with King and Legend of Soul Guard uh, back in August and you know, so think what you will about me and my feelings for the game because we got paid to, to talk about this game. But, I mean, I wouldn't keep playing it if I didn't like it is what, I, is what I'm going to say. <laughs> There's plenty of other things I could be playing. So I, I played a lot of that over the break. It's something I could play on the sly when my parents were around because I couldn't, pl <laughs> I couldn't turn on my PlayStation. 
You're like, ah, oh, yes. <laughs> oh, poor mama. But but John has now learned the sound, the, like the startup sound of the game. Oh yeah. And so I had to always mute my phone because otherwise he'll give you, he'll be like, are you playing that game again? I'm like, no, I don't know what you're talking no, about. No, definitely not. What do you mean? <laughs> definitely. So that's that's funny. Um, but the game that I'm really excited about getting back into that I have been playing uh, this past week is Rainbow Six Siege. So I've talked about this game previously on the show, but it's been a while since I've actually honestly gotten back into it. And I've been playing back with some of my old clan and some of my new clan. So um, shout out to the What's Good Guardians that have been playing with me in Rainbow Six and um, my old clan mates, um, D Underdog and, and Salmons. Don't die. So those guys were my old school Destiny, like D1 vanilla clan mates that we played all the time. Had Destiny Tuesdays. I've played with Salmons. Yeah, you have. So he's great. And I hadn't played with him for a while because he was in a Fortnite rabbit hole. And I was just like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going down that rabbit hole with you. It's just, I was like, because they were playing on PC. And I was just like, no, like I'm just, it's not my thing. And he had started playing Destiny uh, on PC too, but I convinced him to br pick up his character on PS4. Someday, Bungie, please, and let us have cross progression. I, there's, there's got to be a way to make it happen. Epic has done it with some of their games. I've seen other people do it. Just, just let us, just let us take our. Just characters. be kind. Yes, do be it. kind. You could do it. Um, so Operation Wind Bastion is the current season and I have a season pass for year three that was gifted to me by Ubisoft. So thank you Ubisoft for providing me with that code. So I could check out some of the new operators and have a little bit of in-game currency to buy some of the weapon skins and some of the charms. And I remember the last time I spoke about Rainbow Six Siege, I was filled with wonder at how many things were available to purchase in the Rainbow Six shop. And that wonder continues because, <laughs> oh, M G are there a lot of customization options and that's what I love about a game like rainbow is that they are continuing to add content not just with new maps and new operators to keep the gameplay fresh for people who keep coming back to that game but also to really deepen your personalization of that game and really kind of invest you and connect you by allowing you to really customize the operators to keep you incentivized to keep coming back because it feels pretty cool when you get the death shot of the match and then everybody watches the final shot and it shows like your custom skin and your little charm like on the on the replay. I'm like, yeah, look at my cool yeah. gingerbread skin. It's really cool. Gingerbread. <laughs> Seriously, there's, a, there's this amazing skin that makes all of your guns look like gingerbread houses. Oh, my God. I was not oh expecting that. <laughs> The wrath of the ginger men. And so uh, we, we've been playing and I'm kind of, you know, kind of getting my sea legs back under me because what I love about Rainbow Six and what makes it different from a lot of other first person shooters out there is that it's all about strategy and teamwork and communication, which makes it difficult to solo queue. You could still do it, of course, if you're willing to brave team voice chat, but not talking with your teammates really can affect your ability to be successful in that game. And so rolling in with a full squad of five people is super fun because you can communicate about like which doors you're going in, like who's going to be breaching, who's going to be on comms and, and, and watching for movement. And, and you can really strategize with which operators are going to work together. And the diversity of the operators now that we're in year three and we have so many different types of people to choose from, from many different ethnicities, different genders – and really different play styles to accommodate for whatever type of first person shooter you uh, player you are. I've just really been having a fun time with it and I'm excited to to play more and to hopefully bring some more people back into Rainbow Six in 2019. That's the game I've always been interested in it because I think the idea sounds fun and interesting and exciting, but I just it seems, sounds like there's a big learning curve, and well, I think that's what's kind of turning me off. There is. So one of my friends that I play with, he plays in ranked matches all the time, and he says that when people ask him about getting into Rainbow, the one thing that he always makes sure that they remember is you're going to die a lot. You're going to die mm -hmm. all the time, and you got to be okay with it because that's just the way it is because the amount of damage you can soak in that game is very little, and it's – like that way by design because they want you to be very accurate with when you are shooting bullets it's not a game where you can just like spray a lot of bullets and hope to be successful there's plenty of other shooters out there like that that 
you can go play if that's the kind of experience that you're looking for you know rainbow's like six, damn yeah <laughs> rainbow six is really all about um about strategy and doing what you're doing but the good news Brittany, is that you don't have to be the one on your team who's doing all the takedowns you can be the one setting the traps you can be the one uh blowing out walls or breaching you can be the one causing distractions by like throwing smoke bombs or other things there's a lot of support uh, roles available in Rainbow Six, especially if you're playing with a team. So if you're like, hey, my shooting skills aren't the best, or if you want to practice, you know, you can take on some of those other roles too. Okay. I think that would be an easier pill to swallow. If I could just run around like a mad woman and throw smoke grenades and be the bait, that's a role I can do very well. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't suggest running around like a mad woman because sound is a very important part of that game because you can oh. hear everybody's footsteps so you can like <laughs> know where people are. Kids and they're realistic not a good games. game for but Brittany. But in theory, I understand what you're saying. But you, you children, your realistic games. But you these should days. try it at the very least. Um, jump into a match with me and, and some of the other clan mates, and so we can run you through it with a group. Because don't try it by yourself. Then. You're you're not gonna have probably as much of a fun time as no. as you would when you were okay. playing with me. <laughs> I mean, it's, I it's make true. everything better, Britt. <laughs> so true. How do you knew that? Come on. <laughs> okay. But anyway, I just wanted to say um, I've been having a good time with that, and uh, another thank you to Ubisoft for providing us with some codes for Rainbow Six Siege Year Three. Which, by the way, I have one for you if you guys want them. I will try with you. Yay! We can all play together on the same squad. It'll be fun. <laughs> I want to blow shit up. And there listen, like once you see the customization options, you're just those alone will make you want to play. Trust me. Are the are the matches? Do they try to pair you up with equal teams, or is it just kind of like you go out and good luck? Well, I mean, it's so it, if you're just playing in casual quick play. I mean, you will get match made with a full team. Now, there are some issues, some known issues with uh, matchmaking, as in any game. Sometimes you just get mismatched with a team that's way better than you. Uh, one of the problems in Rainbow Six that is a really unfortunate thing is team killing. So friendly fire exists in this game. You can't turn it off. And sometimes you get disgruntled people that want to troll or grief. And instead of working with you, they'll shoot you. And that sucks. Because you're like, hey, I'm here to win. I'm here to play and have a good time. Please don't murder me, teammate. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. But it happens. Please. It happens in Rainbow Six. And Ubisoft is aware of this problem. They've built in penalties. Uh, for example, you can team kill twice. Because I, I accidentally killed some of my teammates a couple times. Because um, sometimes it, when, when things are going crazy and everybody's shooting, you, if you accidentally shoot your teammate, like they die. <laughs> like yeah. they're front there's yep. friendly fire yep. and there's a hostage mode too and if you shoot the hostage by accident then you lose because you've shot the hostage mm -hmm. so it's just something to be aware of so if you shoot if you team kill twice it's a 15 minute ban if you do it again it's a 30 minute ban um i don't know what the ban is for the third time i have to look it up but they've instituted some penalties for people who are just trying to grief because any any PvP has griefers, has people who are there to just cause havoc and not actually work towards the objective. But Yay. it's not it's not common. It's not often. So Okay. Yeah. But Peace. just play with friends and you'll avoid that. You'll avoid that. And again, if you're out there and you're like, hey, I'm excited about playing Rainbow Six, I'll start a Rainbow Six channel in our Discord, because I recently started a Destiny 2 and a Harry Potter channel um, in <laughs> discord.gg slash what's good games. And we already have an LFG channel. So if you're ever looking for people to play the what's good games, Facebook fan page is also a great place. Um, we recently acquired control of our Reddit subreddit account. Is that correct? No, not yet. No. Nope. Okay. We're working on that. And then that'll be a place too, but not yet. Um, so discord right now is the best place. If you guys are like, Hey, I want to play Rainbow Six, but Andrea said it's way better with friends. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of other what's good gamers out there that would love to jump in and play with you, depending on which platform you're on, of course. All right. I'm done talking about Rainbow Six Siege now. But for real, cool. the charms on the guns are really cute. <laughs> I have a little seal that has oh my God. The, um, the splinter cell goggles on it. Cause it's like a navy seal. Do you get it? It's like a little seal. Yeah. It's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's your husbando seal. Seal bando. Know, seal really bando. 
Um, Girls okay. Girls everywhere. Let's take another short break. When we come back, we are going to be discussing our most anticipated games for 2019. I hope you're ready. We'll see you in a minute. back everybody it is segment three of the what's good games podcast i thought you held what, up four fingers what was happening? And I was laughing. one two three is the third segment oh yes you were just counting on your fingers i was just counting like a maniac <laughs> let's go she had all of our sticklies up well we are glad that it is january 2019 because it means we can do our definitive most anticipated video games of 2019 so what's interesting about doing this is that there are clearly some games that already have release dates. There are some games that are rumored to be coming out in 2019. And then when there are games that we hope are coming in 2019. So Steimer, it sounds like you have a mm -hmm. very definitive list going. I have, I have sections. I have okay. sections too. Broken down yeah. by month. Okay. So I have your by month, which is smart. Mine are things I really, really want. <laughs> Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Really want. Um, I have things that I want, but technically have, are not, they don't have a release date or a release season. Um, and then there's things that I'm very interested in, but I have never, like, I, I seem interested to try because, like, they're games that I've never played before, but I think that I would like them. Mm -hmm. And then I have games that are large and, like, cool, like AAA or AA, but I don't care about at all. Okay. But I felt like we should mention them. I don't right. know where you want me to go with this. I want you to start Direct wherever me. you want to start, Steimer. How about let's start with, should we start with the bad stuff first and get it out of the way? There's only two okay. that like I think really fall into this category. One is PlayStation exclusive Days Gone. Oh, I just don't care. can't Heart. bring myself to care about it in a way that I, I wish that I did. Same. I'm right there but with you. It's just, no. Yeah, not doing it for me. And then the other one, which I feel like you'll be sad about, Andrea, is Metro Exodus. Because I yeah, just... I totally get it. I totally understand. Yeah. I, I'm I'm sad because I think that game is going to be amazing. But I 100% don't blame you for putting it on a game that you're not excited about list. Yeah. So for me, those are two games I'm very much looking forward to probably not surprising <laughs> <laughs> but obviously with days gone i mean i would say if this there weren't the freakers right that's their name the freakers mm -hmm. yeah if it, if it were for them I, I mean i don't know how interested i would be if these were just regular people just trying to kill you but because there is that side of the game that obviously i'm very attracted to I'm very much looking forward to it metro exodus i'm also looking forward to because also it looks like a really weird situation going on some freaky deaky shit and that's i'm all about that freaky deaky shit I think it's the color palette of Metro that really turns me off. Mm. Like, I think it's just a little, at least what, what we played at that um, preview event. Uh -huh. I, I think I literally told you, Andrea, I was like, I would straight up kill myself if this was the world that we lived in. Like, I, I, like would, brown? Just, I would just fucking end it somehow. I don't know how because I haven't really, really thought much about it. But I, I mean, would... that's the post-apocalyptic setting, right? That a lot I think of I'm games tired. try to capture. Yeah, I think I'm tired of uh, post-apocalyptic things, oh. and the ones that I will opt into have is either like a Tilu, which of course, or I actually am interested in Rage because yes, they're like I'm just gonna put that on my list. Colors and things, you know, I'm like they're spicing it up a bit, which I'm into. I would mm. I would argue that Metro Exodus is the game that they're trying to really diversify the open world elements of the Metro series because they know that that was a common criticism, not unlike other games, you know, like a Gears of War or something that comes to mind right away of having a very muted color palette, like being all mm -hmm. browns and oranges and things like that. And so uh, some of the snow levels and the other things that I've seen from Metro look really beautiful. And that game, the animation of that game is always really, really well done. And so I'm, of course, I'm pumped for it. But if you've never played any of the Metro games and that – that kind of survival horror FPS thriller suspense vibe isn't your thing, then you probably wouldn't be into it. And the reason I like it is because they really lean more into the shooter aspect of it than like a Resident Evil would, oh, at least the early Resident Evils. Um, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I get it. Britt, do you have any games that you're just like, meh? 
Um, right now I would say Rage Two. <laughs> so sorry, totally off opposite. Again. Oh yeah, it did. But you, you, oh, you look it was very wistful. You... Oh wait, there, yeah, it's back. Again. You're back. <laughs> um, I don't know why it keeps turning off. It's annoying me. Ben and I are totally opposite. I would say Rage Two just doesn't do anything for me looking at it because it does feel like it's just more of like a shooter, post-apocalyptic. Uh, whereas with Metro, to me, it looks more like crazy, weird, deformed creatures that are trying to eat my face, and that is very appealing to me. Uh, <laughs> Not when you don't have any damn bullets. That's true. Maybe that was but, also my issue is when I, when she gave me the controller, I had nothing. She was like, oh, it's you. your turn to play. And I was like, yeah. I... I, have I, didn't to run set, away. I didn't set you up for success. No. That was that was my fault. Um, and it's and that that whole demo, and we talked to the team about it afterwards. The way that they set that demo up was poorly done. And sub, I said sub to ideal. Yeah, I was talking to the to the marketing staff and the PR staff, saying how much I love the Metro series and how I was trying to convince the other people at the demo how great the series is. And that demo was not helping me at all. And <laughs> I hope that they did a lot of lessons learned from that because that was several months ago now and that they've really kind of applied some of that and it's going to be fixed for the launch in February. Mm -hmm. Um, so going back, I want to clarify, I think I'm definitely going to play rage Two, and I'm going to give it the opportunity to win me over. Cause I know right now I don't have any definitive reason why I'm not super into it. Just something about it isn't clicking with me immediately but I'm going to try it. The other one in Steimer, again, <laughs> Crackdown 3, I'm excited to play it because you're hype. You got me, or you, I don't know, you love it so much. I want to experience what you love, and I want to share that joy with you. But yeah. uh, if it weren't for you, I don't know if I would play it. That's fair. And, I, and to also to be clear, the games that I'm not really caring about, I'm still going to play. I'm still going to try them. Yeah. I just don't anticipate them grabbing me. But if they do, great. You never know. Um, but... <laughs> Crackdown is, it's just good, simple fun. Like, Crackdown, at its core, is just, like, running around shooting shit, smashing shit. If that sounds like fun to you, you and me, we're going to have a good time. But if you're <laughs> looking for anything resembling depth, I don't know that Crackdown's your game. Okay. But uh, I just, I have such fond memories of the original and just smashing the shit out of everything. And it was so much fun. And shooting people was so much fun. And just, like... That's what I'm there for. Mm -hmm. It's just good, clean, simple fun. Okay. You can walk me through the crackdowns. Oh, I'll show, show, me. You, show you how to throw everything. You run around, you just collect orbs, then you get better at the things. Like, it's just it's very simple gameplay loops, but mm -hmm. I found them really satisfying. See, I think so that simplicity is going to be the thing that turns me off. I think I'm going to be like, what? I'm bored. But not if we're together and we're just... Hulk smash. I'm not saying we're going to play this game for 50 hours, but I'm saying we're going to have a good time with it when we do. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. So I have all of my games broken down by month. Okay. So I don't know how we want to do this. Just start in January. Okay. So these are games that I know I'm going to play. That's my most anticipated. Anticipated. Number one is coming out. Uh, this is an order of date releasing. Bury Me, My Love, which is that story of the Syrian refugee and her husband. That's coming out on January 10th, and that's one in all text messages. Um, we saw it during the Kind of Funny Showcase, but I believe this game actually came out in 2017 on iTunes. So it's not like necessarily a new game, but interested in that. The next one I'm excited for is Y2K, a postmodern RPG, coming out also this month on the 17th and this is a game I have it up right here that I feel like has been teased for years and years it was announced a long time ago um it's developed by Ack Studios and what first got my attention with this game was they said it has earthbound influence and uh -oh. I've done yeah. that's your trigger word oh man so I played it at PAX I want to say like two or three years ago it's been a thing for that long and it's finally coming out this month very very excited uh, um, and then obviously uh, you may or may not have heard of this little game called Resident Evil 2. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not. Nah, I'm kind of excited is. for that one. Oh, I'm so lucky that my most anticipated game in forever is coming out this month. It's like, yeah, yeah start out January. Are you all year for it? No, I am so excited. That, and then obviously Life is Strange episode 2 is coming out as well. Yeah, I'm yeah. super excited January. for all of Life is Strange episodes. I want them mm -hmm. to come out faster. That would yeah, be nice. that would be nice. <laughs> Come on, don't nod, just crank them out. <laughs> <laughs> Must go faster. Come on. I mean, don't. Sure I mean don't. Take your time, please. But yeah. you know. But also like give us the thing. The so wait goodbye. is so hard. 
I also want to pick up new Super. Okay, I have the title. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. That's such a mm -hmm. the fucking titles on those games. They're just so ridiculous. I can't get. Anyway, it, it's you know a side scroller Mario game. They have the Luigi stuff in there and some new stuff for Switch. That's just something you pick up and you play. But yeah, just have fun with. All right, I'm ready to. Are move you on not? To wait, well, hold what? on. I'm not. I'm like, you tell me to stop. Hard. You tell me. I'll push those brakes, girl. I mean, I'm just excited to give Kingdom Hearts a try and figure oh, yeah. out what the fuck is going on in this game, if we can. <sighs> I'm gonna. Try I want to try it. I want to try it real bad because I love Disney. I have no idea what's going on with the Final Fantasy shit. The conflict on Britney's face, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know is, how to feel parents. about this. I have the con the internal con. It's like okay, on one end. I know I'm not ever going to play the other Kingdom Hearts games. I don't know that no. definitively. We can't predict the future. But, like, it's probably not going to happen. So I want to <laughs> try this. Yep. I want to try Kingdom Hearts 3. But I know I'm going to have no effing clue what's going on. But I still want to experience it. But at the same time, it's like, do I do I really want to? I don't know. I don't I'm know. I'm not saying I'm going to finish Kingdom Hearts 3. But I'm no. definitely going to start Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> we'll see yeah. where we end up. Yeah, because I, like I said, I'll, I'll never understand what's happening in that game, but that's fine. I feel like we owe it to one Alexa Racy to give it a shot. Yes. Okay. I'll probably dip my toe in that water, but it's not something that I'm like, oh my gosh, KH3, can't wait. Yeah. That's my interested to try. That made it under the interested to try list. Yeah. All right. February, Metro Exodus, which we talked about. That's February 15th. Okay. Crackdown 3, February 15th. And obviously... Okay, before we get to Anthem, I am going to try Far Cry New Dawn. I know we're kind of all a little lukewarm on it, but I do have fun with that. I did have fun with Far Cry 5, and I think it could be fun to hop back into some Far Cry action casually. I don't think this is a game I'm going to sit down and, like, you know, play all the time, but I think it's like, hey, I have a few hours. want to go hang out with some warthogs. <laughs> they have warthogs in that game. Oh, yes. Pumbaa. Pumbaa. And then obviously Anthem on the 22nd. Dude, Anthem, yes. I actually have a lot of games this year where I'm excited to play them, like to squad up with people and play. This is obviously one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. this is my most anticipated game of 2019 is Anthem. Every time I see that game, it looks better and better and better. Not just from a graphics perspective, but the more details that they reveal, whether it's customization how multiplayer matchmaking is going to work what the story and the narrative lore is in this world every part of it i'm here for i'm ready i'm so ready just release the game already bioware you could do it a big titan running around soon a colossus colossus not titan yeah is titan destiny titan yes there's a titan in destiny. there's a titan class in destiny yes that's what i was thinking of Maybe for some reason, but yeah. know, I'm going to be the big bitch running around on the ground, stomping yeah, all the, the things and causing all the havoc, the tank. Yeah. Um, and then March also just tell me to stop and I'll stop going down my list. Uh, March. No, I think that's, I'm yeah. almost done because there's after April, I don't really have anything. Um, okay. after March is devil may cry five on March 8th. Very excited for that. The division two, obviously that's coming out the 12th. I think if you have the super duper fancy package or the 15th and then Sekiro shadows die twice, I'm going to try this game. Okay, so I'm, let's let's start uh, with let's start with the division, and then we'll get to Se to Sekiro. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Devil May Cry Five looks fantastic. I never thought I was going to be excited for a Devil May Cry game, and then I got to spend a lot of hands-on time with it at Tokyo Game Show in Japan, and I was like, "Whoa, this is way better than I anticipated it being." It was approachable and easy to pick up, and the combo systems were great. Pretty much everything you love about a fast-paced platinum game, they're bringing the goods with Devil May Cry 5. So it's definitely on my going-to-play list for sure for 2019. Mm-hmm. And have you have you played them before? Like, I've only no. dabbled. Dabbled, no. yeah, same. Okay. A couple of hours with a few of them, but I, n nothing substantial, no. I think the thing that will concern me about that is how long it is. I hope it's a shorter game. I don't want I don't want that for a really long yeah, time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't I can't imagine it would be that long of a game. I have to like fifteen to twenty hours maybe. That's fine. Ish. That sounds about right. I could be totally wrong. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I don't play I this game. I hope so. Fingers are crossed for that. Because then <laughs> that is a game where I would I would like try it out. But originally like would not have ever made my list of mm -hmm. like 
stoked for. Oh my god. And then the division two. Oh, oh. Dude, yeah. So ready. I went back to the division in advance of me working with the team at San Diego Comic Con earlier this year. Cause I was like, man, it's been a while since I played the division. So I wanted to, you know, refresh my memory and that gameplay and it's just so fun. Obviously, it started out a little rough and they learned a lot uh, through the live or the games as live service over the year or two years now going on to the third year. The, the division has been out and it's really gotten to a good spot where they've tweaked a bunch of things and they have an active community and I'm really excited to see how it's going to look in D.C. It looks real the good. You can we played were at E3 where oof. you stomp on Lots. the grass, the grass lays so flat. Good. You can draw little designs in the grass. It's little touches that we care about. Dude, I'm also just excited that there's no more parkas. <laughs> yeah, no the customization parkers. options left a lot to be desired in that game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but and I like, think... but that game is so fun to again, like, get a group and go run around and do shit in. Like, yes. Oh my god. Well, I hope so that good. they take some lessons learned from Rainbow Six and from Assassin's Creed when it comes to microtransactions and customizations. Like in order for people to want to justify spending money on that kind of stuff, you got to make it look really baller and different mm -hmm. and exciting, not stuff that you can just get dropped in the world because I'm with you, Steimer, that I picked up a lot of like samey same gear. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was always the same. Stuff. Not satisfying yeah. to me, especially as a MMO player. <laughs> right. Where's my rainbow shit? Come on, give me the sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Just because so it's the, the apocalypse doesn't mean I can't look fly. Exactly. That's true. I feel like you would look even better because all no one would care about money and currency and actually buying things. So you could just raid the stores and get whatever you wanted. I'm I know insane. what Brittany's doing as soon as the she zombies hit. As soon as zombies She's like, hit, man. Let's set up Nordstrom. <laughs> Let's, go. <laughs> Let's go. That's all I got here in Washington, unfortunately. Um, and then, like I said, I'm going to try Sekiro. I, I have a feeling my butt will get handed to me. I will get very frustrated. And I might Is throw there a baby, baby mode on that or no? I don't think so. No. Well, there's one difficulty. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that'll be that. At least I can say I tried. April, Mortal Kombat 11. Because I am with Smash. Yes. Smash has me all sorts of like, oh my god. And I've actually always been interested in Mortal Kombat, but it's just never something I've picked up and played except for on Super Nintendo back in the day. Well, let's um, play I... together. We yeah. can do controller pass in the story mode. They haven't confirmed one yet, but I have to imagine after how successful it was in Mortal Kombat 10 that they would be bringing it back for and that's uh, 11. I'm actually going to the, to the worldwide reveal event. Not next week but the week after yeah next um, thursday in los yeah. angeles so i'll have a full report for you guys once i'm back from from that event but this is also one of my most anticipated games now of 2019 i was surprised that they're like bam it's coming out in four months yeah they pulled up i'll also be at that event I will be also at the event, get my ass kicked by all the mortal Kombat vets because i just happen to be in la just play day. with me i won't kick your ass oh bullshit <laughs> You, I've seen you. You get way too competitive. You're not fooling I anyone. I know. It's the, it's the <laughs> bad problem I have. And then the last confirmed game that has a release date that I'm into is Days Gone, which is April 26th. Really? Well, oh, well, I guess these ones don't have... I don't know what they're... Everything else doesn't have... I, and I have a list here. Yeah. yeah. Just confirmed 2019. And I say confirmed in air quotes because who knows? Yeah. Nothing okay. ever really confirmed. Uh... I so don't know. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't. Yeah, because I didn't do it by month. I don't know which one of these has just been like lightly confirmed as 2019 and which ones are definitely. Well, what about Animal Crossing, Britt? That's what, oh, add that my that list. Falls under, that falls under the yeah, but it's a 2019 tw general. Yeah, it's a, it, Nintendo confirmed it's 2019. Yeah. So here, okay, I'll just run this down. This is my who knows but 2019 list, and I'll just go through these real quick. Pokemon Switch, Gears yep. 5, Pillars of Eternity 2 coming to console, Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion 3, Biomutant, Untitled Goose Game, I'm very excited for Diablo Immortal, haters come at me, Wolfenstein Youngblood, Yoshi's Crafted World, Her Herald Halibut, which is that uh, claymation. Oh, yeah, that would look, yeah. look really cool. Tunic, which is that little Zelda-looking game. Oh, my God, World the box. World War Z, if it can kind of give me some Left 4 Dead vibes, I'm going to be very excited about it. Sea of Solitude, which is that um, 
one game that we can gain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Layers of Fear 2, Control, which is Remedy's new game, Doom Eternal, and the Valley of Gods, which is from Firewatch Creator, and it's about um, that you're, they're in Egypt, right? Yeah, so I've, or they, yeah. Do, they were exploring mm -hmm. ruins of some kind. Yeah, yeah, in yeah, 1920s. And then my hoping, I'm hoping this gets announced for this year, is the Story of Seasons for Switch. If that happens, you will not see me for weeks on end. And that's fine. Disappear. I'll be living Ooh, my best life. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, there's a oh. ton of there's a ton of so you covered pretty much all of the games that um I'm also looking forward to Anthem, The Division 2, Metro Exodus, Destiny 2. So this is something that I am pumped for because they have this new season pass and uh, a lot of extra DLC packs that are coming. But Destiny has always done something big in September of every year. And now we're in a rotation where hypothetically we should be getting something major, either a really big expansion, like bigger than Forsaken or potentially D3. Now I think oh, man. it might be early for D3 because there was a three year gap, but according to the original roadmap, it was only supposed to be a two year gap. So I don't know if there are, getting back on track to put D3 out in 2019 or if it's going to just be like a Taken King type expansion where they just drop a bunch of new content. I, I, I believe what Bungie has said is that that's not their plan is to not do these big expansions is to do much more smaller pieces of content more frequently. But part of me is hoping that we still get something substantial because I kind of feel like the drip feeding of content means that the content doesn't feel as good because mm -hmm. they're like only like giving you a taste here and there and it's not anything super meaty. And I'm, I hope that Forsaken wasn't like the last big meaty thing that we've got for a while before D3. So keeping my fingers crossed for something to be announced. Um, we also got a confirmed release date or release window for Dreams for 2019. Mm -hmm. Is that actually going to happen? Hopefully, because it's in beta now. We're silent. Um, yeah. But I'm excited to play that game. I have really believed in the imagination and the potential and innovation in that game. And I think Media Molecule really is hitting something special with this game, more so than they did with uh, Little Big Planet. But it remains to be seen how that game is going to be when it finally releases, because who knows how what, what form it's taken since we saw it last. Um, definitely super pumped for Life is Strange 2, episodes 2 through 5. I have to imagine they're going to wrap up the season by the end of the year, but I guess we yeah, don't know for I sure. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. It could technically I, go into 2020, but I doubt it. And then um, the two maybes for me. Sorry, Steimer. Am I interrupting you? No. Okay. The two maybes for me are, is Bayonetta 3 coming out in 2019? Because that oh, would I be really so. awesome. I would love oh to play God. Bayonetta 3. And then we haven't heard a peep from Crystal Dynamics, The Avengers. And now we don't know what the title is. We just know that it's an Avengers game. Um, we don't have any idea if it's actually coming out this year or if it's coming out 2020. Part of me is like, oh, it's such a big property. They'd probably want to, you know, lengthen the PR cycle for that game. But who knows? I mean, we're getting really massive games like Fallout and Mortal Kombat that are announcing and then releasing just mere months later. Maybe Square is going to do something like that. But that's a game that I think a lot of people are like, where is this game? Is it coming this year? Is it going to be on this gen or is it going to be pushed to the beginning of the next generation of of playstation 5 and whatever xbox is gonna name their their next console scarlet or whatever the other one is oh yeah anaconda yeah it's oh my xbox. god no no one is naming it anaconda anaconda <laughs> don't uh yeah i don't know it's this is an awesome lineup of stuff to be fo looking forward to in 2019 and this is just the confirmed shit that we have yeah there's i'm actually surprised you didn't mention like beyond good and evil 2 or 2 oh. 2 you know, I was, okay, so I'm glad you brought those up. I thought about putting Tilo on because I think Tilo actually has a realistic chance of coming out holiday 2019, but Beyond Good and Evil 2, I'm not going to take another, another couple years in the cooker. 
Dude, seriously, I'm not confident that game is coming out even in 2020. From the things that I've been hearing, like the gossip, I'm like, that game seems like it's oh, no. got a lot of work left to do. I think maybe what that team suffered from was too much iteration, too much R&D. Like, what should we make this game? How are we going mm. to make this game? What is this game going to be? And now they finally come up with a vision, but they have to start actually building that vision. They have now. to actually do the thing. Yeah, right. that's fair. Um one game I don't think either of you mentioned that is, I think, confirmed for 2019, just does not have a specific time, is Ori, the new Ori and the Will of the Wisps. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I completely gapped out about Ori and the Will of the Wisps. That's Dude, definitely I a game I'm looking Ori. forward to. I love Ori. I'm so <laughs> excited. I'm like, yes, give me more. No, I saw that game. Um, and I was like, uh, uh, <laughs> it's Brit's like, I saw it and was not interested. <laughs> no, I, I just, love I, it. I think it was the same sort of thing where the demo I was dropped into just was not a good demo spot because I haven't really. It's played hard to demo that game because yeah. like you need to go through and learn the moves as you get them and learn the map because I'm like, and do I go left? Map. Do I go right? Where do I yes. go? Yeah. yeah. It's like people That's... when they tried to demo Cuphead and they got their asses handed to them. <laughs> yes, so that was me. Rip me. <laughs> Rip you. <laughs> I Rip died a lot in that game. <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's like maybe something smaller here that I uh, that I'm overlooking that I'm like, oh wait, are either of you interested at all in Shenmue Three? Mm. I would say vaguely. I mean, just because I love that time period and all that culture and stuff. But I'm just, I, I haven't played any of the Shenmue games, so I think if it comes out and the reviews are raving and people are saying, yeah, you can just pick up and play, it's fine. I mean, I haven't done any research on this, obviously, so maybe it's already known if you can just pick up and play. It but, is known. Uh, if it, is it known? Sorry, That's I'm excited because Game of Thrones is coming back this year. Hey, and it's a Game of Thrones <laughs> reference. Good, good. So yeah, I think if the reviews are good, I will be interested to play it. But um, I'm, eh, maybe. Another maybe. game. I did back that on Kickstarter, though. That uh, I did not back that on Kickstarter, but I did back another game from this particular studio, Psychonauts Two. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's Should right. Be coming out this year, I backed. Uh, oh my god, my brain is totally blanking. Fuck, what was? <laughs> what? Well, don't worry about it. I'm forgetting the name that I Kickstarter. It'll come for to the... you. When it comes um, to you, we'll come back to it. Um, what fine. about Skull and Bones? Anybody excited for no, Skull and Bones? No, thank you. No, that was another one. I was like, am I excited for this? And I'm Clearly not, so if you have to ask yourself. <laughs> is this I something I know, right? This? Is this something I will play? And if it's all PvP, then no. It's, I'm not, I'm not in, that, in that club of kids. Which is kind of sad. Because I, I think it was I like, am fun. Broken Age. There we go. I don't know why I couldn't remember the name of that game, but there we are. Oh, I'm currently playing that too right now. Yeah. Oh, nice. You're I playing like you. five games simultaneously, oh, I know. Brittany. I don't know how you do I'm, it. I'm living a good life. That's that's the right answer. Um, True. Interesting that um, on the on Polygon's most anticipated list, they have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order as listed as late 2019. Of oh. course, this is Respawn's game that Vince Sampella announced at EA Play with me. Um, I was like, you're in there. I see you in the I thumbnail. I was. I was in there. And it's, uh, it, it became a meme. And it was very funny. Um, and so I, I'm i also intrigued by this game because I know nothing about this game and nobody knows anything about this game. They didn't even show a teaser trailer, no game art, nothing. So um, I guess we'll probably have to wait until E3 to see anything about this game. But it wouldn't be beyond me to think that EA would maybe announce this game in earnest, like show something like a reveal in like May and then do a hands on gameplay or like streaming like in that creator cave that they always have at EA play in June. And then they do one last like narrative deep dive in the early fall and the game is out in November. That's like really possible. And I think it could be cool because I love what Respawn does. I think that they do shooting really well. I loved the mechanics of Titanfall. That was really clean, really crisp, really great. Uh -oh. And who doesn't love Star Wars, right? Don't answer that That's if you don't. That's true. If you don't, just keep it to yourself. I like Star Wars <laughs> just fine. <laughs> just fine. That was a good answer. <laughs> oh, there's a new Spelunky coming out. Spelunky 2, yeah. Spelunky 2. No, yes. I'm just, like I said earlier, I'm just looking at this list and I'm like, oh my god, it's Wolfenstein. I, next Luigi's year's Mansion. gonna be gonna be great. 
Which one? I'm oh, excited. No, yeah. Next year. Oh my god! If we get that Pokemon Switch game, uh, girl, you're gonna be trading me some Pokemons. I'm hoarding all of them. I ain't giving someone them away. thought I didn't like Pokemon, and I was like, "What? No." Oh. Have you not I just seen one of the Let's Go shirt? series? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Come on, my, my get it puffs. together, Simon. They must have just been confusing you with me. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, I think it's because I wasn't excited about Let's Go, like Pokemon Let's Go, Eevee or Pikachu. Oh, okay. But I'm like, just because I don't like those ones doesn't mean I don't like Pokemon. That's fair. Amazing how that works. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> So I like think we one. all just took sips of water. We're all like, ah, oh, we thirsty. I saw you take a sip of water, and then I was like, oh, I want a sip of water. <laughs> yeah. It's like yawning. It's contagious. Everybody drink <laughs> some water. Get hydrated. Take sips now. of water all the time. Indeed. Okay, so I have one final question for you before we wrap up the show. Okay. All righty. What is one game that you would like to see, like pie in the sky, pipe dream, Probably will never happen, but if you could will it so to come out in 2019. Oh, this will, this is And try to keep it grounded ridiculous. in a little bit of reality. Oh, shit. Don't like All make right. up a <laughs> fake, don't make up like a fake game. Oh, no, okay. this is a real game. Yeah. A real franchise. It okay. will not happen, but if I could will it into existence. Viva, Viva Pinata, Pinata 2. Three. Oh, 3. It was a Viva Pinata 2. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know this shit. Pin- pinatas everywhere running oh around. Oh my god, like you possessed. would love this game. Are I know, you kidding I me? This is no, like I know. your shit. I know. Ooh, ooh, Viva Pinata on Switch. That would be fucking dope. <laughs> just saying. Um, it would you be could dope. just port one of the old ones. Put one of the old ones on there. I'll take it. I would exactly. actually, yeah. I would play that. I'd play it with you, Steimer. I again I enjoy the things that you enjoy sometimes. Um <laughs> I sometimes my b- <laughs> my yeah. wish is that this will be the year that nintendo localizes mother 3 officially in an official capacity and they put it on the switch and that wait which would... game mother 3 okay so oh mother, mother three. 3 is earthbound yeah so earthbound is mother 2 in japan and mother 3 was released in japan um and it never came over here and it looks just like Earthbound does, but it's Lucas and um, that crew. And I've actually never finished Mother 3. I tried playing it on a uh, ROM many years ago on the computer. And it's just like, I don't like playing games like that on a computer. It's weird. So please, please bring it, Nintendo, please. And just make your online service like way better. That'd be awesome. Give us a lot more games. Thanks. I feel like that's yeah. definitely a good pipe dream call because I don't think that's ever going to happen. But... Um, mine is kind of pipe dreamy, but hopefully the most realistic of the three of us. And I really want Borderlands three to come out in 2019 because we've not heard a peep about that game in so many years. Obviously, Randy Pitchford from Gearbox confirmed it at PAX several years ago, and we know that they're working on something they just announced that they hired um, John Vignocchi, former Disney Infinity exec, to work on a title for them. I don't know if it's related or if it's a different title. I would imagine he's working on a different title, knowing his background. Um, but Borderlands 3 is overdue. Like, I want to play yeah. that game. I've been wanting to play that game. I know they just released Borderlands 2 in VR, and I'm like, I don't want to play Borderlands in VR. I want oh, Borderlands 3. Because I can play with yes, my please. friends and shoot bandits and pick up really wacky crazy guns and oh and kill all the boner toots yes exactly <laughs> yes <Yeah. laughs> run away from skags um oh. i i want borderlands 3 in 2019 i don't think that that's a ta- that that that's a tall order or too much to ask come on gearbox in 2k please, please. that would be wonderful please <laughs> but it remains please. to be seen so I think this is a pretty good this is a pretty good list of most anticipated for 2019. Lots of good things on the horizon. Of the things mm-hmm. that we've listed, the things that are announced, who do you think has game of the year potential without us having played any of these games? Which which of the ones so far you're like that game probably has a shot? Cuz I think we knew at this time last year that Spider-Man had a shot at game of the year, that mm-hmm. God of War had a shot at game of the year. That obviously Red Dead Redemption Two had a shot if at a, the end of the year. So obviously, just from my picks, I think Resident Evil Two will be in the talk. I don't in talks. I don't know if it will win Game of the Year, especially if you have a Pokemon Switch title out that 
completely shakes the industry and does the whole breath of the wild thing that everyone's been asking for oh my god um, oh. dude i would fucking lose my mind you already know that so i would say resident evil i think anthem will be in talks for game of the year if it goes according to plan yeah if it goes question well. mark what do you get what do you think about division two i was i'm thinking if they can kind of do a really nice iteration of it i think it's possible like mm-hmm. if it was if it's too similar to division one no but if they've updated and improved and like done all the things that they need to do to make that game what it could be i would like to think so that it could like why not right why not i think if tlu 2 comes out this year though i think that's gonna be like oh yeah absolutely yeah the, the game crush. Crush. Yeah. for sure yeah i think if if Gears 5 can really reinvigorate that franchise, the Gears of War franchise, in the same way that God of War reinvigorated their franchise. Now, let's be honest, it's apples to oranges. They're very different types of games. But if they can really take a long, hard look at what that game is narratively and from a gameplay perspective and bring some really cool, innovative things to it, I think it has a shot at Game of the Year. More so than some of these other games, like, I'm th- I know Mortal Kombat 11 is going to be amazing. It will never get nominated for Game of the Year. I think Metro Exodus is also a potential contender for Game of the Year, but I think it's maybe a little too of a cult favorite to kind of break through the masses in order to earn a Game of the Year nod. I'm with you that, like, from this list that I'm looking at from confirmed games, I think, like, the Pokemon RPG has a chance at Game of the Year, and Anthem has a chance at Game of the Year. And that's about mm-hmm. it. I don't I don't think the division has a chance. I think any kind of games as service or a live multiplayer game like that um, is the deck is stacked so against them. And I think the reason Overwatch was able to overcome that obstacle or those obstacles is because it's a Blizzard game. And it was like the first new IP that Blizzard had released in so many years. And obviously it's a very well-designed, well-built amazing game and that's why it won but i think that these other games have a lot uh, that are multiplayer have a lot going against them for game of the year consideration Mm -hmm. fair fair enough i i will be curious to see i think days gone is one of those games that's gonna like it's gonna hard flip one of the other ways like either it's gonna be fucking amazing and everyone will be like whoa didn't expect this or it's gonna kind of be it's not gonna be i don't think it will be bad by any means but you know, it might just not quite live up to what people would hope for. And it's a stressful game. And that's the kind of game where not a lot of people, I think, are into it for that reason alone, right? Where it's like God of War, even though we weren't super duper into God of War, the, originally it was so different and so accessible. You knew you were going to play that game and have these fucking crazy ass freakers chasing you down. And str- I mean, I remember Andrea talking about her hands on time with it. It was You said it was very stressful. It was like a, a lot of anxiety and shit, right? Because... Right? Am I making this up? Oh, yeah. It was terrifying. Okay. I was like, like, you couldn't even yeah. ride through the woods without those things coming after you. And then it was not, it's not just one. It's like a whole pack of them. Because that's like their yeah. big mechanic with their their non-zombie zombies is that they come in hordes. And that you can direct the hordes into camps. And the human enemies in that game, like in a lot of zombie games, like the human enemies are just pests. They just yeah. never leave you alone and they always want to murder you for something. And, and you're was, like, but why? I'm like, can't How we do all just you not along? see the herd of fucking non zombies over here? Maybe we should deal with that. Yeah. Humans suck, man. Humans do suck. Yeah, I don't know how Confirmed. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to play that game. Because it was hard enough for me to get through The Last of Us with the clickers and that and oh my god <laughs> and they weren't yes. as bad as what the freakers look like the freakers look way worse than the clickers mm, and at gross. least like narratively there was such a deep amazing rich story in the last of us and we don't know what the story is in days gone we've seen virtually nothing about who this guy is what his giant backstory is what his motivations are why we should care about him and the world that he's in like, and I don't know if that beat is hopefully coming before the game launches. Cause right now I'm like, nope, no thanks. Why do I care about you, sir? Yeah, no idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The game's oh. a giant question mark for me. Also, I don't think we brought up Fire Emblems coming out next this year, too. Uh, we didn't bring it up because 
Because nobody ca- here is like Fire stoked em. for it. Without Alexa I Ray, care. everyone's like, nope, Fire Emblem. <laughs> no, Fire Emblem. I like Fire Emblem. I'll play it. I'll try to hold down the fort. I'll try to make Alexa proud. We're My sorry, all you Fire Emblem knows. fans out there. We're not saying the game is bad or that you shouldn't like it. We're just saying it's not our cup of tea. That's all. Correct. That's all. You know, I like a good herbal tea. <laughs> yeah, me too. Some po- sometimes people don't. It's true. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, this has been a fantastic first show back in 2019. Ladies, thank you for the always stimulating discussion about our resolutions, about some of our top games of 2018, and of course, what we're looking forward to in 2019. There's going to be many, many weeks of talking about video games. And we hope that you guys are going to be here for the ride. Don't forget, if you have not yet subscribed to the podcast on your favorite podcast app, you can do so. That would help us out a lot. Maybe you want to head over to youtube.com slash what's good games and hit the subscribe button. Maybe you even want to hit the little bell for notifications for when we go live or when we post videos. That would help us out too. Or if you want to go the extra mile because you really love the show and it enriches your life, patreon.com slash what's good games. For just $1, you can get in and get access to our weekly vlogs, our exclusive feed, the happy hour Q&A, which is happening very soon, actually. We'll have the date for you guys on next week's show, but kind of Mm -hmm. keep an eye on the weekend of the 11th through the the 13th. 13th. Yeah. So we're probably targeting Saturday the 12th. For our happy hour Q&A would be my guesstimate. Yeah. But um, if you've never joined us for one of them before, they're, uh, they're a riot. They're lots of fun. A hoot. A hoot, if you may say. Yes, indeed. And the after hour stream will be back uh, for January. So that's not going anywhere for the time being. And yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got, Britt. Do you have anything? That's a good one. Simon, you got No, anything? you got it all. No, we've already been talking for too long. She's like, I'm tired. Let's just no, go. Eat it's some food. just like I think it's funny that make maybe we should make a show resolution to have shorter shows, but probably not. No, <gasps> we love our long shows. <laughs> I'm really just hungry. That's all that's happening right now. She's hangry. <laughs> well, At this point in Simmer's life, God of War is a fine game. That's all it it's is. Fu- it's exactly. Fine. It's, it's a, fine. It's fine, guys. It's a good. <laughs> and game. then you give it's her whatever. some cheese, and she's like, "Actually, I really like this game. It's great." Oh, don't <laughs> talk to cheese. me about cheese right now. <laughs> All right, go Stomach get some cheese, Stomach still hurts girl. for New Year's. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye.